This is Infection, the survival podcast, recorded live on Tuesday, March 19th, 2019, episode 218. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Infection, the survival podcast. Infection is your source for the latest information on survival video games. We bring you the latest news, reviews, updates, and more each and every week. My name is Nick Craig. You can follow me on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig. Visit our website. It's infectionpodcast.com. He finally appears to be feeling better in the great state of Boise, Idaho, looking, yes. looking slick. Brian with an eye Aldrich. Yes, I'm, I I feel pretty good. Throat's pretty good. I think I'm uh, 90 something percent. Excellent. Yeah, it's close enough. Uh, if you want to find me at Boise Computer on Twitter, or you can check out my blog, biteoftech.com, and make sure you go check out our website. Um, but if you want to find me at Boise Computer, and a, I don't really tweet there. I don't know. I think that's, <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't really use it, but I do read the news on it. So if you want to, uh, if you want me to follow you, if you think I there's something that what? is interesting on there that I should check out, let me know. I'll follow you, and then uh, and then we'll go from there. Are you are you whoring yourself out to other people and following? I'm just saying, like I mean, uh, all I use Twitter for is a place of gathering information. So if you think I should follow you, because I follow people and I just look at it for information. I don't tweet every week. I don't really find it that you know. I don't feel like I need to tell people about things on there. So, but. It's a good place for me to get news. So if you think I should be following you, that's I guess you could follow me and then I'll follow you back. But you need a message. Are you team follow back? Yeah, that's what, I'm not looking for followers. I just I, if you think that you have something relevant that you're going to say, tell me because uh, Are you, or you could go to our website. Do you follow me? On I Twitter? should say that. Yes, I do. Actually, oh, good. I do follow you on Twitter. Thank you. But you could go to our website, too, if you don't want to uh, use Twitter to send news. You can go to infectionpodcast.com, and on the right-hand side, there's a join our Discord server. Uh, on there, we actually have a news channel, so you can get information to us, uh, put links, whatever whatever you think we might cover. We had a lot of news this week, and we have a huge amount of news that you'll see this week. Uh, but a lot of people did submit links into there, and that will make it. I don't know when the last time. You tweeted at I, some uh, guy in January telling him that he needs to add more color to his logo. Being very yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a game developer. That's <clears throat> the last time I tweeted. You're a real piece of work, so, Brian. I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, I, I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna say hey follow me for great tweets. I'm not gonna tweet anything. Follow but me, that's why follow you follow me. You. Follow me for great tweets. Yeah, only the only the greatest. Nick's tweets got only the best tweets. I tweet a lot. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so you can follow Nick. Uh, but it's probably our Discord server is the best way to get us information. We hang out throughout the week on there. Um, boom, it's a lot of fun. So join our Discord server. We have on there also uh, our Steam group. You get nice notifications right before the show starts. If you happen to be at your computer on a Tuesday evening, Tuesday afternoon, you can uh, you can join our, disc, our uh, Steam group. You'll get a notification, pops up, and then you can join us live and be a part of the show. Speaking of joining us live, it. our uh, our friend Greenman Cartoons hit us with the resubscription. 14 months. I think that's since the beginning here, since we started doing this. So. Thank I think you. that's, yeah, when we started Thank actually you. being able to get subscriptions. Yeah, after I, I finally got co co uh, coursed into the doing. Remember, we didn't want to do it originally, and then we're like, eh, yeah, okay, yep. fine. So, uh, yeah, Nick, well, no, Nick said, we are not going to do that. I, I didn't want to do original. it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to have any expectation of, uh, we don't have time to do this this show. We've got too much news. We can't. Oh, yeah, we got so much stuff where we're, we're burning wheels here All right. for the first time. Uh, we don't have time. All right. We've got two and a half pages of show notes. This is, in, this is incredible, incredible amount of news. Lots of things happening. But first, Brian, what are we doing for game of the week? I will be out of town, as always, um, <laughs> on Fridays. I will be uh, up. Uh, I mean, do you I will do we be... want to do a Conan? Do we want to do a Conan <sighs> night? At least get you a can. presence going? You can. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, we. Okay, so one thing, I'm just going to put a piece of information here since the beginning of the show. Uh, we have a Conan server up let's, and running. Let's do Conan then. So, um, and the thing is, is we put some mods on there to make it more uh, solo friendly. So if you'd like to, because that's the thing, is on a game like Conan, we always run into the problem of if we really want to do end game stuff, we have to group up. A lot of people like to make their own thing. The one thing that Conan is very good at is that you can sit there and make your own bases, and you can do mega bases. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, and so, if you uh, if you want to still do your own thing, make your own base, 
Uh, there's a mod on there that pretty much adjusts the stats of the in-game bosses so that you can do them by their by yourself. It will still be a challenge, but it is possible to to do all the content content by yourself. So you're not required to join up with another group. You could hang out with them and do things, but you could fully play that server uh, and stay on your own. All right. Well, how about that for Friday night? Come and, and Lance is saying mods. Don't don't even start, Lance. <laughs> I was, I was going to ask that question, but now that the waters have been tested, I won't. Um, so, yes, join us Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern in our Discord for Conan Exiles. We'll be, yep. uh, we'll be playing that. Uh, I should say, I won't be. I'll be out of town visiting a friend. Um, and one thing for the mods, uh, it's actually very easy. They've done a good job with it in Conan to where when you go to join the server, it will say, here's the mods that this server has. Would you like to install them right now? Perfect. It installs them right away. And then it loads right in. So a good so, recommendation uh, would be to maybe nice. log in sometime this week to get your mods installed and then come in Friday yep. night and you'll be ready to go. Maybe that's the best idea. Yeah. I mean, you could ju you could <laughs> jump in and start playing a little bit. We'll probably hang out, but we'll have to decide whether or not we want to make a, a group uh, or if people just want to be near each other and keep their own groups. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, join us for that Friday night. Maybe I'll pop in. I'll, I'll be in front of a computer. We'll see what's going I'm on. I'm sure, you know, once people get going on it, I'm sure we'll have some people on Saturday as well. Yes. Oh, I'll be gone all weekend. Uh, um, but nevertheless, let's talk about our previous game of the week, Brian. This was a very interesting yes. game. And it was H1Z1. The uh, Excuse me. It was Z1 it was Z the Battle Z1 Royale. Z1 Battle Royale, formerly known as H1Z1. H1 formerly. Z wait, no, that one was always. Oh, formerly, formerly King of the Kill. Formerly King of the Kill. Formerly H1Z1. All right, so we've got a lot to get into this evening, so let's touch some of the points here. Uh, I, I, I took a couple notes when we were playing. I just scribbled them out, mm -hmm. and then I put them into our doc here. So the first thing was uh, the grouping system. Yes. Atrocious, to say the least. Um, we had many They haven't issues. really improved it since the last, how, what, six months ago? Oh, it's, so it's, that... it's always been awful. The group system has always yeah. sucked in H1Z1. But um, the thing is, is they kind of have not published an update. They, they've been working on this for however long since Jace, you know, started promoting it and they broke off, uh, they've been working on this thing and that this is the first update that they've done since that. And so I was hoping that they would actually have improved some of those aspects. More of, it seems like what they've been doing is just kind of rolling back and making sounds and as the, what they've been saying, they're not actually improving the game yet. They're just rolling back uh, the, the feel and the, and the the features of it so the problem we were running into was the suggest an invite um mm -hmm. uh feature in the game so uh we weren't and not everybody's for whatever reason just because you don't have to not everybody's steam friends with everybody because we are normally playing groups typically everybody's friends with at least one person in the group and we can get everybody into a game so h1z1 has got a feature where you can suggest a friend to invite to the host and you suggest a friend there's, by the way, no yeah. notification in game that somebody has suggested a friend to the host. Yeah, no pop-up at, at it, all. But it does show up in the menu. There's a little drop-down that says suggested friends, and it will say one out of one. So you click that drop-down, and then you click invite to the suggested friend. The problem is the yep. invite doesn't get sent to the suggested friend. So then we had to close the group out, make sure one person, which I think was me, had everybody on their friends list, then went back into the game, and then I invited everybody. None of their... Uh, player icon showed up. They were just gray boxes, so I couldn't tell who was who. But yep. but but that was that. So we got in after we. I mean, we must have dicked around with it for fifteen minutes. Um, well, we 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 broke up. We broke up the group and remade the group. We all I think relaunched the game. Yeah, that was about fifteen but minutes. We in. got we 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 got to the point where we finally were all in the same group. So we got into the thing and we joined a game. We got into a five man. The launch system. Now it's been a while, a real long time since I played H one Z one. The way, uh, oh, by yeah. the way, the lobbies were starting with 40 people. Not sure why. There were plenty of people playing. but So I guess maybe the goal here was to not make people wait in lobbies. So in that regard, yeah. they passed. But they were starting games with 40 people. This was a five, this was five man. So starting with 40 people, it was a smaller zone. It was a smaller portion of the map. But I thought that was stupid. Um, yeah. It should have started with at least 60. Because um, there were that many people playing. But nevertheless... We, uh, we get into the game, and we get into the parachuting scene. And we are reminded that you randomly spawn above somewhere on the map, and the parachute essentially is of no use. You just pretty much fall down to the closest point of interest. You can't really yeah. travel with the parachute, unlike games like Fortnite and PUBG, 
and Apex, where you can Apex, yep. glide and change your pitch and your speed. Not really an option in H1Z1. You just kind of float down to your destination, then you spam A and D to try to get to the ground quicker than everybody else. And that's kind of the system. That's how it's always been. Um, yep. It was a little archaic that you, I, we weren't able to select where we were going to dis- decide to land. And another huge issue. What direction am I facing when I launch out of the plane? Or, yeah, or that, when I that spawn? That update that they did, whatever they did to the minimap and, and using different colored icon or dots, and then your dot has a slight little bit of a, a tip to it that then is supposed to tell you which way you're facing. The thing is, is when you're in a group and you're all together in a five man, it doesn't do anything. All those dots are stacked on top of each other. I, I, I died one time because I couldn't tell where my dot was. And I was trying to, I was using that to judge where the gas was. And I started running. I think, Oh, I'm, I'm almost there. And then I died like the very first game. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, so, okay. So these dots are weird. And then I under, then I was like, I'm just going to ignore the dot. But we had this problem where when we spawned in, we were like, what direction are we landing? We yeah. didn't know. It was like, uh, go for the four houses that are in a row. It yeah. was very awkward. Um, yeah, it, it was definitely not intuitive. And I think part of this, I mean, I brought this up. I, I don't remember if it was last week or, or the week before, but was talking about how now that we've been spoiled by some of these other games doing this in probably what we consider the right way yeah as far as the mini map the parachuting sequence uh these ping systems which we are not seeing in here uh but you know what i'm saying like we're seeing we're getting all the best and and some of these games are taking and cultivating a game that has all of those best features h1z when it says we're going to make it like the old you got well, comfortable not improving. You got comfortable riding in the Tesla, and now you're being thrown in a 1996 Toyota Corolla, and you're yeah. And now, I mean, let alone I, I can complain about the seat warmers, but that's <laughs> just the beginning. I mean, so the thing is, we've gotten very comfortable with these with these. I'm gonna call them creature comforts of a battle yeah, of luxuries a, of a battle royale game, knowing what direction you're facing, very intuitive mini maps, um, uh, being able to decide where in the hell in the game Everything's you want to land. Everything's just very clear to where you can call out and you know where the other team is. Well, you can decide where the hell you want to easily. start the game. I mean, we were just randomly spawning wherever the hell the game decided to spawn us, and then we just had to essentially fall straight down to the to the to the closest large area where we could gear up with five people. All right. Can I tell you why though? I think this is. Yeah, I mean, it's your your show. You can. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's our show. I'm just saying. I, I think. I think personally, the reason that they have always done it this way and the way that they or the reason that they don't change it to be more like the other ones is that you run the risk that like you see in Fortnite, everyone wants to go to Tilted Towers. Tilted Towers is like the place to go or for, for a while. Tilted and so, so, so a lot of people would go to that one place. Well, this game, I think, struggles more with the possibility of having a bunch of players spawn in the same place. And so I think they disperse them across the map to make it so that their engine can handle the fact that you have up to 100 and whatever people landing and one you know, landing on a map at the same time. I think a lot of it comes down to that this game might have some issues if you actually let people pick wherever they wanted to land and be somewhat accurate about it. Because you know, with some of these points of interest, it, there may be like, oh, well we're going to go this every time and you get a quarter of the map going to one place, it may pretty much trash the servers. That's my guess. I don't know. I, I I don't think that's an impossible solution or an impossible reason. I just honestly think that they have, that there's no, or at least that was the thinking or when they originally made well, it, maybe they on, haven't changed it because, yes. because they're just well, don't and, change things. And now to the credit of the original H1Z1 development team, they were now people like to give them crap for this, but in fact, they were like the first, they were like the first B, one of the first BR games out there. Um, Not on armor. Not on Arma, exactly. So there wasn't a there wasn't this idea of doing this bus or plane or whatever to a ship to parachute in. So in well, in their defense, okay, a little but bit. I, well, what I, I don't remember exactly, but I think that the the plane sequence is from the original Battle Royale. So I think that H one Z one chose not to do it. Yeah, well, they tried because to do something I, different. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so the, I mean, they they customize it to their own, but I think that originally the original. Uh, Battle Royale that was on on the uh, Arma engine 
that was one that was actually, I think, had the plane scene in the beginning. I think that's how they were doing it. USAF zombies saying, I couldn't control my parachute at all. And I mean, you really don't. Like, you can go a little bit, but you're, you're very. It seems like they took a lot of the responsiveness out. Like, you, you can just kind of you just choose glide. your direction slightly. Yeah. You, yeah. you pretty much glide to your location. There's no real. Remember, you used to be able to do like 80, 80, 80, and you could. It seemed like you were actually yeah, moving. Like, that's well, how you, you were moving. That's how like you this. land. You just move side to side. That's how you land quick. It seems like they took a lot of that responsiveness out. They so. may have. Um, all right. So, so we get into the game. We parachute into the game. We get to the ground. Um, loot seemed to be pretty good. The, there was plenty mm -hmm. of loot for for a five man group. We weren't landing in the most heavily. We were, I don't believe we landed ever in a major. We landed in a major city maybe once or twice. A lot of it was subdivisions and little houses and whatnot. Gear yeah. seemed to be pretty good. There was plenty of it, plenty of ammo. Um, vehicles spawn looks looks pr the spawns looked pretty good. There was there were pl plenty of vehicles in the game. Um, gunplay itself, I didn't have, I didn't get a kill. We played for over, over two hours. Um, now, I, I'm gonna say to my defense, I'm not a good BR player, but I can get games. I can get kills in games like Apex and Fortnite and um. PUBG. I can I can be I can attempt to be competitive. Yeah. I was getting my ass handed to me on a silver platter in H one Z one. Um I was I was and that's always been the case. I was getting killed very quickly. Our group was getting killed very quickly. Now Ross and USAF are pretty good players, so they were they were some of the last two alive in most of our games. Um and, and they're they're good at FPSs and they play a lot of them. Um, but I just wasn't having any luck and most of our team yeah. wasn't, we were getting engagements and all dying. That was essentially what was happening over and over again. Yep. And so I, yeah, it, as far as uh, an enjoyable experience, I mean, we, we did, we had as much fun as we could because we we're just hanging out and playing. And we did, we played for but, two hours, but the experience wasn't one where in some of these games we'll do this. Hey, let's play again tomorrow. I said or that I was hoping it was when we talked last Tuesday. I said, I hope on Saturday we'll be playing it again. I uninstalled it Friday night after we stopped playing. Yeah, I, I just didn't get that feeling of I want to go in and play this again. First of all, for me, the biggest thing is I'm spoiled by having games where it's a, the, the video is very clear. And that was my complaint when we were playing is I feel like everything is just so fuzzy. I feel like I'm shooting it maybe four pixels if I'm lucky. You know, if they're not too far away, it's four pixels moving around on my screen. Uh, but it just seems like it's you're just aiming at not blobs because they they did fix some of that to where it's not a blob when they're at a certain distance. But once they get far enough away, it's you're just you have a little little area of pixels that you're, you're actually shooting at. You're spraying and, and praying. I mean, you're just you're hoping just that you're you're to happen to be over the one spot. Yeah. Um. So they and then Joe he couldn't get in. Of course, they have the region lock. Yeah, which which didn't seem to stop people from China playing. So I'm not sure how that works. Yes. Um. So, which which was which sucked, and it, you know we could have played in the EU or whatever. We've talked about region locks in the past. I'm a fan of them. I'm not a fan of them when we can't meet in a middle region, and that's what we were having. He now yeah. that was an issue with there his was, internet, but nevertheless, we we were we were going to try to meet in the EU servers and play, but we had an issue with that, so we we were unable to do that. Overall style yeah. of the game, Brian, it felt like an old game. Um, it is it, an old game, but there's like. nothing they can. Nothing they can do about it. And it's it's showing its age. That's why I, I don't I really don't think that these guys have a chance to save this game. Honestly, I mean they can try, they can make it, but there's so many options now. The other games just have a feel of modern and uh luxury as far as the different features of being able to uh well recover people, being able to do a ping system. One thing that I even noticed, uh, I'm trying to think of what people were playing. I was watching some people play a game yesterday. Actually, I was watching PUBG. I was watching mm. uh, the guys from Hot Drop playing PUBG. And one thing I noticed is like, oh, this doesn't have the ping system for items. And I said, that's that would be because I'm, I'm listening to them call out, oh, there's a gun over, just like we used to, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, there's this gun over here, or there's this piece of armor over here. Oh, where is it? Over here. The, the ping system is so is so nice to where you can say, all right, I'm going to ping it. It's going to mark it on the map. You can go there when you want to feel like getting it. Little things like that make such a huge difference in the game. I like the ping system. Don't get me wrong. I don't think the ping system is necessary, though. I think you can still... I think there is an element to the call-out system. I think it adds... A, it, it, 
the ping system is a comfort. The ping system is an ease of use. Yeah. And I'm not opposed well, to Well, especially games. in a five man, when you're when someone calls something out and you have to figure out which of the dots happens to be them to know where to run. I, when you get to a five man group, it becomes very nice because then you're not having to sit there and try to figure out who's talking, where they at the moment, things like that. It's nice, but it's not necessary. And that's the key thing here. I don't want every BR game. That's not game, the reason the H1Z one's not. But I don't want every BR game to have a ping system. I think it's nice that sometimes that there isn't a ping system. It makes the, the game, it adds just a little bit of, Brian, you talk about time sinks all the time. It adds a little bit more time to your gearing up and your looting. And I don't necessarily always think that's a bad thing. Apex did yeah. it right. Totally right. They did it. They did a perfect implementation, or as close to perfect implementation of the ping system that I've seen. But I don't think yeah. it's necessary to have. I'm fine with PUBG not having the ping system. It's a different style of game. It's a much more hard. Well, and you don't game. want every game turning into the same version. You know, a different version of the same thing. I mean, because every if every single BR game said, "Oh, the ping system is a new thing," and they all put it in, you know, you just all, all they do that with every feature that seemed popular. And I mean, you kind of have you kind of have uh, Fortnite doing that a little bit. They're pulling in all the features, but not every BR is. Now, PH points out it's needed if you play with randoms. Now, that is a good point as well. It doesn't require you to use in-game VoIP to essentially communicate with your team. Now, Apex yep. doesn't have a solo mode, so that was a little bit different. But games like Fortnite, where you can play alone, PUBG, you can play alone. There's it's a, it's a little bit different. Um, I, again, I don't think it's necessary is it convenient yeah absolutely without a doubt it's very convenient but, but the thing is, is what my, my kind of my point is h1z1 or z1 battle royale pretty much has none of these creature comforts no but as you said as we've talked about it's an older game yeah and, and they haven't really how long has it been since they've really added a new feature to h1z1 can you remember well this i mean they did add new features with this update they reverted a lot of things back to uh what, what it was in ps3 but I mean, they have some of the colored dots. I mean, that. But they I haven't don't added being new in, things. Um, like what, though? Like, can you think I, of anything I, in particular that the, really stands out? I can't think of anything head, that really no. stands out. I mean, no, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. There are things I, I just that remember that the, the mini map and the dots having the different colors and things that I do not remember. So it seemed like that was different, but that's not no, that's something. That's been in game, that, though. But, but the way they made it stand out way more. And that was the only thing I could really see that was, okay, that's well obviously different than what it was in season three. So they do have the, um, the, uh, fragment system that is new. Uh, yeah. Is it a new, is it a new feature? Not necessarily, but it, but it is new. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a new currency pretty much. Exactly. Um, uh, Saul Greatman coming in with the resubscription saying H1Z1 is a 2015 time capsule of sad. Um, I mean, it, uh, in all seriousness, I've got a list on here, Brian, the overall feel. And I mean, it, that's kind of what we're dealing with is it just feels yeah. like I haven't played, um, Brian, you ever go back, uh, you're sorry, you're too old for this. Um, like going back and me playing RuneScape from like 2008 when I played that or me going back and playing Halo three. It was like me going to play EverQuest. Exactly. I went the back and I was like, this is nothing that I it's remember. It's not that nothing is you remember. It's just, you can tell that it's a game from a different era. No. It's not. At the time, it seemed amazing. Halo 3 is one of the best. Now, you, well, we can argue about this, but Halo 3 is one of the best games, Was is arguably one of the best games ever made. Does it hold up today? Yeah. Yes. But it feels, the, the physics, the mechanics, the speed of the game is just different compared to today. It's not necessarily yeah. bad, but it's just very old. And that's how it, and now H1Z ones it felt bad. It didn't feel smooth, it didn't feel good. It just felt old and stale. And the problem is, it's not that old of a game. It's not like the game yeah. came out 15 years ago. Halo 3 came out in 2006 when the Xbox 360 yeah. came out or maybe it was 2004 i don't know when the x when the halo 3 came out but you're talking about a game that is over 10 years old h1z1 isn't 10 years old game came out in 2014 well, th that's the problem is h1z1 was out of date when it was released exactly as far as the technology so the rebirth the remaster of the game in 2019 does it feel better yes compared to what it was previously does it look better yes but at the end of the day, it still feels like an old, clunky, cobbled together game. If that's your style, if that's what you're comfortable with, good on you. 
I hope you have a good time playing it. But for people that have gotten comfortable to modern engines, modern games, modern mechanics, and modern looks and feels, it is a hard pill to swallow to play H1Z1. Yeah. And it's, I, well, it'll be interesting to see. This is they've released as far as their first Z1 Battle Royale. Uh, you, you'll I'm, you'll go over the player numbers here a little bit later. It's been what two weeks? But, it came out last Wednesday, so this will be almost yeah, two so weeks. So we'll have to see have the numbers actually changed. Are people playing it? I don't know. And you know this. I know you don't want to give it away. <laughs> I don't, I'm not asking you to answer this right now, <laughs> but that'll be something we can check out. You know, is, is this actually having an effect? Do people care that now it's named just like it went from King of the Kill to H1Z1? Now it's Z1 Battle Royale. Do people actually care? And we'll find out. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Any other things you want to say about H1Z1? Um, Z1 Battle Royale? Yeah. I mean, I'd say go ahead and play it. If, if, you, if you haven't played it in a while, I'd recommend you install it. Just install it unless you have a bandwidth cap. Install it and play it and see what you think. Let us know. Um, yeah. Again, you already own it. I would assume everybody listening to this podcast owns it. Well, it's free to play now. Oh, you're right. It is free to play now. Um, so, you, you, of course, you own it. So yes. Download it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, got, I'm fake news over here. Um, <laughs> give it a try. If you're, if you're a BR fan, I'm, I'd be interested to hear what you uh, say about it. But I, in fact, have uninstalled it. Um, I'm not sure if you have, but, but I've uninstalled it. No, I haven't bothered yet. But. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's H1Z1. Um, little, uh, I was disappointed. How about that, Brian? I, I think if you listened to the show last week, um, I did actually do this today well, um, when I was uh, sitting around here waiting for some stuff to, to finish up. I did go back and listen to my comments last week. I was very excited because I was hoping, yeah. hey, like we might be on the right track. And unfortunately, I just didn't feel it. And again, we gave it a try. Two hours. We played for two full hours. Which should have yeah, been we enough. didn't give up after the first two or three games. But yeah. So. I mean, we played enough to, to, I think, make an accurate, um, have an accurate opinion on it and not just say, oh, it sucked yeah. after one game. That's H1Z1. All right. Very good. H1Z1. So we've got actually some... Do we want to go into this next big topic? Yes, we do. All right. Because we want to make sure we have enough time for this. But uh, so there was a... There's pretty much the Game Developers Conference. GDC is going on right now. Where's that? In LA? Or Vegas? Somewhere on the West Coast, I think. Yeah, it's down in California. Okay. Uh, and so they, there was actually an announcement by Google today. And at first... Google, you know, they announced things. Let's let's play. Let me see. Let me well, double check before, which... before we do that, um, th this has been rumored that Google's working on a gaming thing. If you remember back in December, they uh, had a service called, we talked about it on the show, um, mm -hmm. uh, Google Streaming or something like that is what they called it. And they were doing a test with like Assassin's Creed Origin, I think. And it was it was similar to some of these other services we've talked about, where they 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 stream the game to your computer. You're playing it remotely um, yeah. on another system. So that was a uh, project stream, I think, is what it was called. And that was back in November, December. And you got a free copy of, I think it was Assassin's Creed Origin. I tried it, and I think I talked about yeah. it. So that's what we had. And then there was a, lots of rumors they're doing something at GDC that puts us here to today. All right. So play that first video, the video number one. Okay. And this is the first one I watched and see if you can gather what it is based on that video. Okay, let me get this pulled up here. I didn't download these because there's a lot of them. But um yeah, here we go. From the beginning of time, games have brought us together. Players and spectators. By the handful, the hundreds and the thousands. We built stadiums. Places to gather around every kind of spectacle. Glory. Tragedy. Pageantry. Community. Rivalry. And wonder. Until every city, town, and village had a place where anyone could play. Thousands of years in, our games have changed. But our need to come together remains. This new era of gaming needs a new place to gather. One place where anything you dream can be built. Playgrounds for every imagination. One place where you and everyone you know and everyone they know will all play together. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Let's go, squad!
one place that never stops evolving. Where everyone will play. Where did he come from? And watch. Yes! High five! Strike! Right. Bam! And create. Winner! Woo! Nice! From any screen, at any time. One place for all the ways we play. This is Stadia. Gather out. All right. Um, so that was the, that was so they did. They're at that. It was a live press conference. They did at GDC. So they opened. Yeah, you know, they talked. Yada yada yada. And then they showed that. That was their trailer for Stadia. And after watching that, I was like, okay, that pretty much told me nothing about what Stadia actually is. So then they had a second video, which actually goes a little bit more into it. But here, watch the second one and see if you can still understand what it is from this. Now, for our audio listeners, which we've got to remember here, um, so it essentially <laughs> Most of the rest is it, talking. Yeah, it's so just it's just really a, it's just a hype hype trailer. You know, saying it's a play, sixty FPS, four K buzzwords. You know. But it still didn't really tell you at all what the product. Is. No, if you watch the trailers, no. Now, the whole I think the goal with this was to watch um, the whole conference the whole itself, GDC thing. Yeah. So, what is this? Let's let's kind of. You have a whole bunch of video timestamps here, but let's talk about what this is. So yeah. this is a couple of companies have worked on this, are working on things like this. The concept with this is you don't need a powerful gaming computer in your house to play video games. You can essentially yeah. rent a good computer or rent essentially a CPU memory and a video card from a company and they stream the game to you in real time, you interact, it goes, and all the processing is being done on the server. So essentially all you need yeah. is a stable ethernet connection and voila, you can play the latest and greatest titles without having to have a thousand dollar gaming computer. That's the concept. And that's, yeah. and, that's essentially and the, what they're doing. And what they did is they partnered actually with an uh, AMD to make a GPU, a special GPU for this. So it's pretty much an AMD GPU with 16 gigs of RAM and SSD cloud storage is what the initial specs are. So that's kind of their stage one specs that they're doing on this. Um, and so compared to the, the processing power, compared to what your PS4 is doing, your Xbox doing is actually quite a bit better. Now, some of the things that you'll hear people say though is, well, this is really based on your internet connection. So some people like Joe, if he tried to play this, it would probably not be a very pleasant experience. Well, there's a couple of things. The server itself has got teraflops of the measurements that video cards are kind of rated in. So mm -hmm. the Xbox and PS4 both have about half the teraflops of this Google Cloud platform, but you will have macro blocking and you will have compression of sending video over the internet in real time. You're, it's not like running a GPU in your computer. Now, I will say I haven't tested this. Nobody has tested it. It's not, it's not out yet. But it, it, is, it is powerful hardware in their data center, in Google's data center. Now, one big thing that's different, Brian, from this than a lot of other services is you'll notice, and I see these ads on Facebook all the time. Um, it'll, it'll show a Windows computer, and the guy clicks on it, puts it full screen, and then he's playing a game, and he's on a laptop. The difference between this and a lot of these other services uh, is you're not renting a Windows VM. This is not a Windows computer in a data center with Steam installed. This is a yeah. full gaming platform, and games will have to be individually made to work with Stadia. This is not... 
Well, one okay. So one thing that just to mention this, uh, these systems they're not a Windows system to begin with. I've been wondering at what point is Linux gaming because Linux. I'm a big Linux guy. I always promote Linux, right? Uh, these are actually running on Linux. These servers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, if you look at most of my posts, they're pretty much all about Linux stuff. You have the uh, licensing um, to use the uh, Penguin here? Yeah, because it is open source. So <laughs> <yes>. uh, <laughs> and, and so th that is the thing is on these, this is actually running Linux. So they're they're even separating themselves from Microsoft in a way and making games that are truly platform, not they're pretty much platform independent. Well, and because when you are running a, when with a lot of what these other cloud platforms are doing, Brian, is they're running Windows VMs. You have to deal mm -hmm. with the overhead of essentially Which is way less efficient. You're dealing with an overhead of an operating system per user. From what I understand and, with and this. And then also the licensing costs with Microsoft, like it, it just adds to it and nickels and dimes. And if you're trying to provide games in a similar manner to like Netflix, because I think that's the end goal is that video games are more like Netflix. Which one do you want to play? Here's a list. Pick, I mean, that that's kind of where it's going. Maybe a subscription service. They haven't set a price. I haven't yeah. seen any prices no. anywhere. No, no, no. Um, but I think that that is their end goal. What? Because right now, some people look at it and say, "There, I would never do that. Or that's stupid. But that's my impression. The exact, but, but the thing is, just think back at the times when you actually went to a video rental store, picked up a movie, mm -hmm. you had the movie, you watched it and then you took it back. Yeah. Or you bought the movie and you had it all the time. Right now we're in the stage of you go to the store, you're buying the DVD, you're bringing it home and you own it. Uh, then they went to, they kind of like what well, we have Redbox here where, okay, I will have the game for a period of time, but I still had to go and pick up the disc and bring it back. Uh, and I think what they're trying to do is segue to what Netflix is to where, okay, I don't know what I want to play yet. I'm just going to go look at the list, and instantly they said within five seconds it starts. You, the game loads. There is something. The thing that I find interesting about this, Brian, though, and again, I want to say this to state this: this is not renting a machine to install Steam to play games. This is its. Mm -hmm. This is essentially a game marketplace owned by Google. That's what this is going. to I just to be. don't know how because they this they is kept not, This is not kept Steam or the, Epic or you play no. or. Uh, origin this is its own this, independent it, thing this is a first party they're calling it first party gaming service yes um now the one thing that i i was looking at it, it is i don't know how they were talking about you could go to a youtube channel watch a video about a game and at the bottom you can hit play yeah. is that a play to purchase is that a play to like are you buying the game i don't think so. first of all are you buying are you renting it are you already paying a subscription service kind of like youtube red or whatever i would assume like I, I i'm not sure where they're going with this but do you remember when i said months ago it's like at what point are we going to get to where my game license is not tied to this windows box if i own i mean look at all my games i own those games at what point can i since i own the license to that game go play it on my console this is kind of almost getting close to that well, it, where it's not tied to the console itself it is but it's tied to a service. It is and it isn't. So I've got, so I, I love, I love the internet. I love the hypocrisy of people. So the p same people that bitch and complain about having multiple launchers and their games spread all across different platforms are having a field day with this Google service. They think it's the greatest thing ever. This is now, this is all now I'm not, I'm not somebody that cares because I, I don't. But this is this only fragments further. I would argue that this is this is bigger competition to Steam than Epic is because this is a full this is a full overthrow. This is okay. I'm trying to articulate this. I've been thinking about this all afternoon. This is not for console players to get into PC gaming. This is a whole independent platform. For people that have good gaming computers, because the games, there will be games on this service, presumably, that will not exist on the platform other than this Google stream service. There will, in, the in theory, be exclusives because the games have to be developed specifically for this. They showed a Doom uh, Doom Eternal game that's coming out, and it said it took, he said that it took yeah. them just a few months of tweaking, a few weeks of tweaking is, to they, get this to work. They were already using the physics engine that this is using. I understand. That's why they picked that game. 
because there was a minimal amount of work that they actually but had the, to do to transition. But my this. point is, it's a different game. It's a. It's. Yeah. It is not like this. When you do some they of these other, it to this. When you do some of these other cloud stream services, you just you, you log into the computer, you go into your Steam account, and you play the game through Steam. Yeah. This is not Steam. These games will not exist. Some of these games, in all likelihood, will not exist on Steam or Epic. You will have to subscribe to or do whatever with well, the Google Play. Let, let's work platform. our way there because I, I have some specific reasons of why that will be okay. Right, yeah, but I'm wanna, all over the let's place. Let's work yes. through. Let's work through this first. So first, let's look at uh, let's look at multi-platform. Here's okay. a video of sh of them showing the transition process and l play the video, and then and there's some talking to it too, and then we'll explain what multi-platform actually means. Okay. Imagine you've just discovered that game for the first time. You're running it on the Chrome browser, and here it is on a Pixelbook uh, running the Chrome OS. There is basically no hardware acceleration on that laptop whatsoever, and the game is running directly from our data center. It's then easy and instantaneous to move that same game experience from exactly that moment onto the phone, here on a Pixel 3 XL. Once again, no loss in quality, and we can go straight onto the desktop PC. We actually went to buy the least powerful PC we could find here. Um, and we could uh, enjoy the same vision that the developer had, the same high quality 1080p stream at 60 frames per second, and the full game vision, regardless of the hardware that you're using. And then it's once again seamless to go from running on our uh, PC to running on a tablet. Uh, in this case, once again, uh, running the Chrome uh, OS uh, on a Pixel Slate. And then finally, we then move seamlessly to the TV. And so this TV is accessed using this, which is a Chromecast Ultra HDMI streamer. There is no console required to reach this experience. All right, so I do want to point out, you can see the significant delay from the controller to what actually is happening on the screen. I will say this, it's a demo, it's a live event. I'm not going to necessarily judge the service based on that. Um, yeah. This part is very cool. I think there is some legitimacy in people wanting to play um, uh, a full fledged. We've talked about this, Brian. Full fledged games on phones. How do you do this? Yep. Something like that, this is the this is one of the only ways that you can truly do it. Yeah, because you can't. Your phone is not power. You play. You played PUBG on that uh, Razer gaming phone. It packs. And oh, that was a nightmare. I was killing everybody. It was like yeah, it was I know, like I I was we had cheating. to sit there for freaking forty five minutes and watch you play this. But the thing game. is, it was like I was cheating I because the lag was so bad; it was letting me kill people. But, but whoever the, wanted. But the the point is, they had to so they had to dumb down the game so much for you to play it on the yeah. phone. This because it is streaming, streaming to the phone. You don't need. You don't need the phone's GPU or the phone's CPU to do a whole bunch of encoding or to do a whole bunch of rendering. Rather, it's going to be it's going to be sent to your phone, encoded. Your phone's going to decode it, and then you're going to be playing it. You're ready to rock and roll. Now, can um, I tell you what I think is probably the best part about mobile on this? Since it's not running on your computer, uh, if you're because of a, a maybe a sporadic internet connection, your connection drops. It doesn't kick you from the whole game. It will pretty much pause your game, right? You're just, you won't be connecting to it. As the second you get internet back, you'll be able to resume your game from that exact point. For single player games, yeah. What are you going to do when you're playing? No, uh, but even multi, oh, even well, multiplayer. So, so what are you going to do when you're playing PUBG on your uh, on this platform and your your phone hiccups and somebody's right in front of you for a gunfight? Well, I'm saying you'll still die, but what I'm saying <laughs> is it won't drop you from the game saying you lost I understand connection. it's not going to drop you, but I, I mean, there's going to be some huge if, problems. If you have a spread of connection, depending on the type of game, yeah, this will make it to where it's not constantly saying, oh, you, you're you actually exited from the match. It, it's like letting you reconnect to a match. And they do show that the, all the demos here were single player games, and there's a reason for that. And I think, and we'll get into that a little bit later on, but I think there's a big reason why for single player games, this makes a lot of sense. Um, somebody that maybe doesn't have a powerful gaming computer. All right, so the cross-platform is cool. You go from platform to platform to platform, and you essentially just click resume, and you get to make you get to just jump in wherever you are. Now, the, let's look at why they can do that, because here's the one thing that I think really makes this system unique, 
and that's the controller and that's what's actually allowing that process to happen gateway to the best of stadia it enables you to access the full stadia experience and there are many advantages to the stadia controller and the first is that it will connect through wi-fi directly to the game that is running in the google data center the stadia controller identifies which screen or device you want to play on and links it with your game session running in the cloud, ensuring the highest possible performance and the best experience for players. In addition to the standard functions you'd expect to see on a modern game controller, the Stadia controller features two very important new buttons. The capture button is for sharing and saving your game experience back out to YouTube. Stupid. The gamer can choose to share their experiences starting with a click of this button to themselves, to their friends, or to the world. They are in control. And the second one is the Google Assistant button. Even stupider. Pressing this button no, allows no. players <laughs> to immediately access the controller's built-in microphone. All right. Uh, so uh, have we, have we seen enough of this? Special in -game yeah, the, the main thing I was wanting to show was was that it's Wi-Fi. Yeah, which is interesting. So, Brian, I mean, I don't... And I don't, it has a headphone jack. That's kind of nice. It is kind of nice. The, the, I said that. The share thing is... Uh, the share thing is retarded i but mean ps4 has yeah, and it's stupid have you ever used equivalent. it i use it only if i want to save a recording for me for later how like often it, do you for use me it? to see um it depends on the game it, it just depends on the game but i don't share those out to people i have never I just used, used it. it as a recording yeah if it's something that i like i need to remember something or if i want to save that like whatever happened in the game if i want to say that i just hit it once i don't do anything with it i hit it once it saves a copy of it somewhere, and then that's it. I understand why they're doing it, because they own YouTube, but that is such a waste of a button on a control. I'd rather have any other button on that controller. The assistant, they try to they try to say that there's some integration. Th that may be fine. The share button is beyond stupid. Um, but, but, the, but the Wi-Fi part of it, that is something different. It's not using Bluetooth to connect to so let's, uh, your, any kind of a con so, uh, so, computer or console or anything. So let's TV. talk about that. I see some potential issues with this, Brian, and I'm sure their engineers have worked this out. So you're essentially going to be connecting to your game instance in two different ways. You're going to have the video you're stream. You're getting a video stream of it. It's the results. The video stream is only is, a one-way feed, the results. It's like watching a YouTube of the, video, of essentially. Happening. Yes. And then your device, which I've got some questions about this as well. So now you have to have two devices connected to the internet. Um, and then this controller has got its own little Wi-Fi thingy mabobber in it. And itself is not going to your computer to Google. It is going from you, from the controller directly to Google's data center where you're interacting. I could see some, I'm sure that they're doing frame syncing somehow, but I could assume I could see a latency issue building up with this if you're on an on a unstable connection. But there would be more of a latency issue if you were connecting to your PS4 and then it was routing that. This they have the they control the hardware, so they have the ability to optimize it themselves. They can push updates to your controller and and tweak it and try to improve it. When if they're tied to the let's say a PS4 controller uh, and then it's going through a PS4, really they're at they're beholden to those the console maker to make sure they're as, as fast as they could possibly be. So I think this is the best way that they could have total control of the process from your hands all the way to the data center. All that matters is the internet connection at that point. Otherwise, they're handing it off to somebody else. Their, their compatibility, whatever it is, there is something else in the picture. Does that make sense? I just I think I, that that... I mean, it, I think this is their best option for trying to control the environment that people are doing this under. It probably is. It's just different. It's a little bit weird. Um, so they've got that. That's what allows you to, again, seamlessly go from thing to thing. So your controller essentially is going to be linked to your Google account, and that's how it's going to know to... It's its own separate device by itself. Exactly. It's going to know to go to its thing. There's no price point in that, by the way, either. So we don't know how much that's going to cost. Now, they do say you can use a regular controller to play this. So if you're playing on a computer... You can, you know, plug in your regular Xbox a wired One controller or who knows, yeah. wireless PS4 controller and use that. If you're on a phone, presumably there'll be some type of on-screen controls. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, or if you're on a computer, of course, you know, with sod and a mouse, keyboard and mouse. Um, so that so that would work. Um, but they obviously are trying to sell this controller. It's a slick looking controller. It looks very similar to the PS4 controller. Um, but like they, a mix of the Xbox and the PS4. Yeah, it's it's a little less bulky than the Xbox controller, which I think they kind of missed the mark on. Um, 
So they've got that um, with with Stadia, their own controller, which you're, if you're going to use this a lot, you probably are going to want to invest in the controller. That's probably what you want to do. Now, this next thing, I was kind of thinking that this will be maybe one of the more interesting things for streamers because one thing with Twitch that I've mentioned in the past is what at what point are they going to separate the video game stream from the play the the re- streamer's view their camera versus so that a person watching the stream can actually jump between maybe different views at what point are they going to take control of this so they have uh they have they're calling this I I put it as like simultaneous streaming but let's play that and see if you got the same thing out of it that I did cuz I I think is I'm that reading in into it a little bit to the stream bit. you get as a player there is a second simultaneous stream at 4K 60 frames per second that you can choose to share directly to YouTube from the Stadia data center meaning your gaming memories will be saved at the highest possible quality okay so with that now I'll say a couple things here we were chatting about the and by the way there's a reason you should be in our discord we were chatting we were uh showing this we were doing this lot we were kind of commentating over this live in discord ph and i were going back and forth with uh usa of zombie and we were just talking about this falcon was in there as well this is great but it's not twitch and frankly nobody streams yeah. youtube videos nobody streams games to twitch or excuse me nobody streams games to youtube and people want to have control so they can do their overlays their donations the whole thing now, I'm sure they'll but, build something like that in, but... but I that's what I'm saying, is this opens up the door for them to be able to do something different. This opens up the door for them to be able to say, all right, we're going to control, we're going to use this YouTube gaming as a service, right? Here's the feed coming in for the game. Here's my video feed coming in. Now let me build an overlay with the panel, kind of like a YouTube live thing, and all of that work is actually happening on YouTube side. But why? Well, I mean, what's wrong with the current system? Because right now the streamer, because you got to think they're not aiming at Dr. Disrespect and people like that who are willing to put thousands of dollars into a streaming setup. I understand. This Brian, is, but who wants to watch some jack- stream? Who wants to watch some jackass with no production quality and no knowledge stream? I mean, the reason Dr. Disrespect is cool to watch is because when he's playing Apex, he's sitting behind a green screen and he's built a little blue halo around him like the one girl's ability. That's why people want to watch that stuff. I don't want to watch some jackass stream to YouTube live. I can already see that crap. The PlayStation does that and the Xbox does that. And guess who watches those streams? Nobody, because they suck. They're garbage. Yeah, but but imagine if imagine what if, if the doctor could create scenes and real and not have to worry about encoding and doing all that extra stuff. Like it would cut down on the amount of bandwidth that he has to use to do that. So you could even he could even stream out of his house at 4K for his personal video. Like it would open up the door to be able to actually have true 4K streaming. I, I don't disagree with that. Where, but, where most people cannot do it. I don't disagree with that, but I'll tell you that the Xbox and PlayStation both have that capability built directly into the system and literally nobody uses it. I mean, but those things are usually so bad. Well, I mean, I mean but, the but, and the, but the, 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 it's not that the quality is bad. It's that you're so limited. All you can do is yeah. have the chat on the right hand side. If you've got a PlayStation Eye or whatever they call their camera, you can use that. And then you can use the microphone in your headset. Other than that, nada, non existent in terms of production quality. Now, can YouTube yeah, build but something I think like if, Stream if they're Labs? serious, they'll build something. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is they already have some of that with YouTube Live. They have the ability to do that. They've tested one thing. They have tested, uh, if you remember, with all the, the Google Plus things and Hangouts, they had all those things that were putting overlays uh-huh. on people's faces, and they were doing a lot of testing of things that have led up to this. Uh, and so I think that if they come out with this, they will have a full, like you're, what you're saying, the equivalent of a Streamlabs interface that you can control from your tablet, that you can control from a low-powered computer. All you have to do is just put a high-quality video stream to it, And they'll give you a passable interface. You put the game in. They'll let you put overlays because they were we were doing overlays back in Hangouts. Yeah, I know that that were being put into the feed. Hangout Toolbox had a whole bunch of cool overlays and lower thirds. Yeah, and uh, and you know, and he was able to do that as an app that was hosted on uh, on the side of YouTube, and then you loaded it, and he maintained it through there. So I think that this has a lot of possibilities, whether or not they do it. Google has the 
the crazy ability to be able to say, hey, here, look what we could do with this, and then they don't actually Hold do on. it. I disagree with you. Will they do it? Absolutely, Brian. There's no doubt about but it. Will, because, will it be done but it's, fully? No, I don't, not even well. that. Will people switch from Twitch to YouTube? Because this is they've only said that this will work with YouTube Live. And Google is the Google's is such pricks about this stuff. They lock all their okay. stuff into their but platform. Look at all the people that stream on YouTube Live because of the the more lax restrictions. Twitch is incredibly strict about all kinds of things. They if people are. want to have anything to where they can say whatever they want, they do stream on YouTube. There's lots of people streaming on YouTube. Uh, that refuse to stream on Twitch because of those restrictions. So you probably will get a set of people uh, that will come to this. and it, Because we've already seen people doing it. On, I mean, who knows? Enough blunders by a Twitch. People may be perfectly willing to leave it. Brian, I'll tell you, the most watched Twitch streamer right now, excuse me, the most watched... Um, person on youtube live is streaming Fortnite, mm -hmm. and they've got thirteen thousand people watching now that's a respectable yeah. number yeah but that's it that's the top streamer on the platform he's got 14 14 000 people thirteen thousand people watching if we go over to twitch right now and look at the top thing it's grand theft auto and it's soda pop and he's got just shy of fifty thousand people so does summit and so does another guy. He's got 31,000 people. So then I understand that people do stream on YouTube. Don't get me wrong. I'm not arguing that. But you've got a, you've got people like Summit, Soda Pop, and Dr. Disrespect, Lyric, uh, yeah. Ninja, all of these guys that are literally making... Ninja is making half a million dollars a month streaming on Twitch. Is he going to move to YouTube gaming? Because we've said... We, Brian, you've said this yourself. Those people will go where those people are. And if they're not on yep. YouTube Live, if they're not on Twitch... And they're not using YouTube. If they're on Twitch and they're not using YouTube Live, the service might as well not exist. Is it going to be great yeah. for people like you and I that want to maybe just stream for the hell of it to our Discord group? It's going to be very convenient. Yes, but is it going to be a new platform? Yeah. I don't know. I, I see. I that I just don't. I don't have confidence that Google is going to truly do this in the way. Because one thing that Twitch does to maintain those streamers and the numbers is they do a lot of outreach to their streamers. Uh, and, and they do a lot of promotion uh, as far as who they show on your front page. Uh, Google does more of a whoever shows up on your front page is actually based on who you want to who you watched in the past and things that you have looked at in the past. Uh, Twitch, we were looking at this last week. There's a guy who plays the accordion who's on my front page every single day. <laughs> and he's on another a whole bunch of other people's. He only has like 70 people that watch him at a time. Why is he on everybody's front page? Somebody must like his stream and they put him on there right yeah uh, that wouldn't happen on google and so i think there's much more of a here's people that we want to be popular and twitch pushes those people as much crap as we give twitch you're saying twitch is a real company with real people unlike google who has no support no people that interact no public face yeah. whatsoever it's just a freaking form google help form they they don't reach out they, they don't reach out and you can't reach in i mean it's it's kind of a, a void yeah so there is, so that guy oh, yeah. stopped streaming on youtube means the most watched person on youtube live right now has got six thousand viewers and he's streaming yeah. fortnite and there's just not that that's the thing is there's not enough people so they'd have to make they'd have to build it up and i just google's not good at working with communities like that they i mean with with the Google Plus community, Google pretty much was fighting against us a lot of times. And we were building up a big community of people. Yeah. And it seems like they did nothing to try to cultivate that. They were upset that it was getting too popular and that they didn't have control of it. So I think the streaming and the sharing stuff is cool from a technology standpoint. I think it's very cool. From a yeah. practicality use case, I don't think people are going to use it. Is it more convenient? Yes. But I don't think you. I don't think you want. I don't think people want more convenient. They want higher production quality, and they want all that stuff. And the streamers, frankly, probably want to control that stuff locally. They've already got the setups built. And I mean, I this to, would be for new people coming in that, that maybe will. But there would have to be people there to find them. That's my and point. The thing is right now, there's not people to find them. It's like Brian. I've got all the equipment. You've got all the equipment. PH has got all the equipment. I mean, the whole our Lance. Is, we've got um, probably three quarters of the people in this Discord. I mean, our friend. Uh, uh, USAF Zombie has got a freaking 3D printer stream running on Twitch where he's 3D printing cool stuff. 
almost everybody, a lot of the people active in our Discord have the ability to stream right now, and they've got the capability yeah. to do it. Why is this YouTube product going to force them into doing it? I don't know if it's, I don't think it's going to. Now, we stream to YouTube Live this show, but there's a reason we stream to YouTube Live. It's a back well, and forth okay. which is down. Probably one reason would be if you are not doing, if you're, let's say you're using the service to play a game, you're then just doing a screen capture of your of the video that's coming to you, right? And so it's actually going to be even more delayed uh, slightly because you're doing a capture of a remote stream and then restreaming that back to a streaming service site. You know, it, it, who knows what kind of issues you may run. And plus then you're using a bandwidth and that's going to actually going to affect your game if you're eating up your bandwidth. That's going to cause latency on the stream itself. I mean, there's technically streaming from your computer and encoding 4k video from your computer while you're trying to stream to your computer probably would lead to problems i'm assuming that's why they'd say well then just use our streaming service that's like they're rather than fix it or figure out a better way to do it they're just gonna say just use our streaming service yeah so, all right so we got that we've uh so we've got that so far you've already covered that it's okay on linux yep and, it, and then uh um, and then yep and then there's partners i wanted to show who they're partnering with as far as technologies uh, and they don't really say it, but mainly there's a, a picture if you want to play it. Yep. We can. Oh, I'm just going to show the picture here, it. and you can, if you want to talk well, about some of these people. Okay. Um, so what they're doing is some of these different uh, companies, Simply Gone. Uh, I'll, I'll just run through them so you have an idea what they do, and they'll kind of give you an idea of where they're going in this industry. Because I want to talk about the development side of it after this. So as far as engines, they've got Unity, they've got CryEngine, they've got Unreal. Uh, those are the three major engines that are partnered with this. Uh, about, you, uh, now, Simply Gone, that's one that actually takes really high detailed models and simplifies it down to where it takes less resources to run a computer. It's really helpful if you're trying to make something run on mobile. Uh, or, you know, you just need to break it down so that people can actually run it. Modelers make things that really, a lot of times, really high detail, but it's too much for your computer. So um, they've got things for audio. They've got the uh, Havoc, which I was talking about, that's the, the physics engine for handling physics, water effects, things like that. Uh, they are partnered with AMD, but I think it's because of the GPU thing that they did. Uh, and then Face F FX, which is like a um, facial capture. Uh, they just, it's a lot speed tree, which makes incredibly high detailed realistic trees used a lot of times in uh, movies. So that's when you see a forest in a movie, it's actually a bunch of fake trees. Hmm. And so just that's, some of them, but these are the main, some of the main companies in the industry. This they are partnering on this, which I don't. I don't uh, why wouldn't they? I don't see Forge Light on here. Do you think they missed but that? Yeah, Forge Light somehow, uh, you know, they were too big. They just they couldn't quite <laughs> nail down that contract. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, so on this uh, one, one thing that I thought was funny is they put on here we're partnered with Nvidia and Unity. And they didn't mention CryEngine at all. And so I had to go look at that list. So they didn't even mention CryEngine in that, that talk. It yeah, was on did. there. But, but it was, they yeah, said, it was right there. It was listed there. But he actually said, we're, we are partnered with NVIDIA, and, or sorry, Unreal and uh, Unity. Didn't even say CryEngine, which is kind of weird to me. Hmm. So they must view that as kind of a minor partnership. Now, Ross is saying no Lumberyard. That's very interesting. Amazon service. That is that is okay. very interesting. Well, you couldn't. They couldn't, though, because the servers would have to be hosted <sighs> well, on Amazon. Well, that's going to be a problem. Gonna, Google's hosting these. I understand. I'm just saying. It, it, they, they couldn't. Yeah, they couldn't make it. Um, okay, so here, one more video. So he said this, and I want to have you say whether or not you think this is true. So go ahead and play this, right. and then there's, there's something... That he'll say at the very oh, end. I want to get your take on this. Yeah, I'm sorry, YouTube's locking up on me here. Uh, hold on. What you're talking about? It's not perfect streaming. No, video no. It's just I've got a whole streaming? I've got a whole bunch of YouTube videos open. I think it's freaking out my computer. Um. All right. This is a uh, this is a, a thing as I struggle to find my words. Here we go. Oh, it's muted. Here we go. Today. <laughs> what that means is a synchronized state across a very high volume of players, where innovations like distributed physics can be built into your games where Battle Royale games could go from hundreds of players today to thousands of players tomorrow. And yes, no cheating and no hacking. Okay. There you go. Now. There's, two, there's a couple parts in there. Well, okay, so no cheating, no hacking. 
the game isn't running locally on your computer and theoretically you don't have access to it. So of course there's no cheating and there's so, no hack. So that's what I'm saying is this is one of the only things that could really probably make that claim uh, accurate. And it would actually be an accurate claim because you don't act, yeah, you're not other actually than maybe somebody game. could have, could uh, do some sort of a macro on a controller or on a keyboard or something. That's the only thing that they could really do that it really limit. So you could say that's cheating, you know, using some sort of a macro to fire differently or whatever. But that's kind of the limit to what you'd be able to do. It, it would only be on in, that input device that you're using would be the only effect you're able to have on the computer, on the remote computer. Yeah. So um, he also said, now, if you look uh, at Mavericks and the thing that they're kind of saying is is the big, big deal with them is being able to have a thousand players. Well, this takes out, this not takes out the need, but this in a way is becoming that whole platform that they're trying to introduce with that of not having the restrictions and, and having a lot of processes run on the server side and not having everything run on your computer. So this actually would let you run a thousand players in a BR. One reason that that would be is because First of all, this would have, who knows, gigabit minimum connection, whatever they're doing internally, they could do 10 gigabit, however, whatever their connection is between the different uh, servers running this, there is no limit. All you're doing is seeing the result of all this. So if they wanted to have a huge amount of data in the background going back and forth between thousands of players, as long as they set up that infrastructure to do it, all you're doing is seeing a picture of the end result. So it would, I mean, it would actually work. So I, I think that that is something that really would be taking the, taking the chains off of a lot of developers in their restrictions. I, um, okay. I'm not going to, I don't, what, what are the features you want to talk about? Then we can get into our opinions of the, of the service or do you have you back? Okay. Back uh, just this, just this last one here. So I don't know. I don't know if you noticed, it's difficult to get a couch co-op game lately. And they meant they actually give, and we thought about they our give the reason. Sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. Most treasured <laughs> gaming memories, something kept coming back, womp womp. something that we'd lost. When modern games start to push the boundaries of current hardware, rendering two or more scenes simultaneously becomes too resource intensive. And so split screen couch co-op has been fading from gaming. But when all of your clients are in the cloud, couch multiplayer has new life again through Stadia in what we're calling Stream Connect. In the past, the resources required to execute split-screen co-op have required developers to sacrifice more of their creative goals. With Stream Connect, we're making it possible to realize split-screen multiplayer without any performance penalty. Behind me, you'll see a technology proof of concept that we built at Google. It's called the Night Forest, a co-op demo with asymmetric player roles. Here we have two players, one hunter on the ground and a supporting aerial player, set up in a standard split-screen view. Each of these screens is powered by a separate Stadia instance. But what would happen to squad-based games if developers could allow players to call up the views of their teammates on demand, or utilize any polygonal surface as a receiver for another player's video stream? Stream Connect makes this possible with extremely little effort on the part of the developer, bringing dynamic squad-based gaming into easy reach even for very small teams. We've shown okay, you three views, that's but we can, good keep right there. Okay. we can keep adding so, screens and I mean, that, that's the thing about this is a lot of times you don't see games that are pretty much eating up all of the console doing uh, the split screen anymore because it's having to do double the processing. Yeah, I don't think you, that's the Usually reason. they'll, they'll, it's a mellowed out version, maybe lower detail, things like that on, on the actual co-op games. I don't think that's the reason. Well, but there, I mean, that that is a big reason oh, oh. of why usually you're seeing the same screen or it's a simplified game. I understand, but I I mean, I don't want to get into a whole argument about this. Uh, not, I don't mean argument, but I don't want to get into a whole conversation about this, but the, I don't think the reason people aren't making co-op games is because it's 2008, 2018, 2019. People have freaking internet. And so you don't need to play co-op games anymore. You can play co-op games with people across the freaking country, the freaking world, Brian. Yeah, but there's a lot play of a goddamn co-op who... game with somebody in Australia. I don't need to be sitting on the couch next to them. I mean, why don't we talk about that? Well, when you get married, then you'll you'll maybe. But I mean, there's games like fun. there's games like Overcooked. There's games like Rocket League that have all that stuff. Now you talk about uh, lands. Rocket League whatnot. does it very well. I understand Rocket League does it very well, but I mean, I, there are reasons why co-op games 
are not as popular. There, there's that Broforce game. That's a popular. That's a popular couch co-op game. But I mean, developers yeah. aren't making co-op games because they can't sell shit in co-op games. Brian, you have you can only sell that's stuff true. in online BR games. So, is she making a valid point? Yes. But to say that, well, we can't. There's no well, co-op yeah, is games. Is that the only reason? Do you think that them opening that up is the PlayStation Two had more co-op, co-op games than the PS4, and that yeah. had an abysmal amount of video processing gaming has changed co-op is dead for a reason because it's just different people have the internet now so co-op you don't have to play co-op you can play multiplayer there was no multiplayer there was very limited multiplayer on the ps2 you had to have that bs networking adapter and even if you had it it sucked so co-op was very popular LAN was very popular but i mean now it doesn't matter because that's the thing is I'll, I'll look through PS4 and it's so hard to find a co-op game. Well, why would a developer make it's a co-op game? I mean, we, we, see, we see them in E3 every year. These cool Like Unravel little... Unravel is a really good one, but those are made to be co-op games. I mean, there's a few co-op games that that's specifically what they are. So you sell your game for $20 and that's it. That's why, that's why yeah. co-op games are not selling. That's why single player games are not selling. But it wouldn't really matter if you're selling it as a service at this point. If, it's, it's if it transitions to this, yeah. it doesn't matter. You're making a game that you think people are going to want to play not necessarily thinking about will this have a big effect on uh people nickel and diming with with skins and things like that if it's not your actual game will that be a thing anymore will skins and and crates and all this stuff are since we don't really know the pricing model if you don't actually own the game how are you going to purchase skins for it i I mean is this going to fix that I, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer to your question. Um, I just think that that's one thing that sticks out to me is, are we take? Are they trying to, going to be trying to take away that whole uh, income method? You know, is one beauty of of if you look at Netflix, okay, there's supposedly not ads, right? That's the selling point. Well, is this the selling point going to be okay? You don't have to. You pretty much get everything in the game, and there's no more. Uh, loot boxes and all this other stuff. Now, Ross is saying, I used to have two multi-taps for the PlayStation, which would allow you to take, it had two controller ports. You could plug that in and hook up three controllers to that, or four to that, saying that he used to have sometimes eight screens on an old square RCA TV. Now Ugh. all my friends have internet, so we don't need to do that anymore. Bingo. I mean, yeah. That's it. It's The gaming has changed, and that's why you see less co-op games. Now, is she yeah. wrong about that there's a technical limitation? No. The Xbox One and the PS4 are the quickest consoles that have ever existed. And there's n- hardly any co-op games. I mean, I've got co-op games for the PlayStation 2 sitting on my shelf because it was popular yeah. then. Yeah, so, I mean, she she may just be looking for a reason. Well, they are looking for a reason, say. and th- that's what marketing is. I get it. Yeah. But it does open up to where they'll be able to do... I mean, one of the things that they kind of push towards the end is there, it'll open up so much for being able to process things on the remote side and having things communicate uh and it, it's pretty much i mean imagine atlas they wouldn't need to run the however many servers they're running about two a hundred and something servers to be able to do that giant grid they would just have it to where it'd be a giant open world and it would it would do that for them the equivalent agreed um so i mean that's pretty much kind of what they're offering to these developers and they're pushing for them to develop it so Here's one thing that I didn't put in the thing, but they will let you develop on their service. So this is for the people actually making the game, or you can buy a big server box that actually has Stadia printed on it that you develop in your own local cloud, or you can develop it on your computer. So they're kind of curious how they expect you to, I mean, I guess if you're running a huge world that for all of your people that would normally take really good CPUs for them to sit there and to do world development and things like that for level design, it will take that away to where that's actually all processed remotely now. So where you, they, you could give all your people lower powered machines to actually do development. I'm not a fan. Of, I don't like this service. I think the yeah. whole thing, it was, it was a typical Google press conference, Brian, where it was a whole bunch yeah. of talk about a whole bunch of great things that they're going to do in 4K streaming up to 8K streaming, 60 FPS, bada, 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 buzzword, 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 this, this, that, da, 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 da. and guess what we saw at the end result? No gameplay, 
No announced date, yeah. no announced price, no nothing, nothing. They didn't announce a goddamn thing during this press conference. All they said is, here's the name and here's a controller, here's some mock-ups, and here's a shitty demo that we're going to do on stage. That was it. In the most typical Google well, fashion normally, with this stuff. Normally what Google does is they don't actually, they're not the ones who actually carry it out. Like they'll, they'll be kind of the early, early on setters of an idea. And then another company will come in and actually make it right. And that's the one that people will use. I, I just, I might be, maybe it'll be Amazon. Who knows? I, I, I think there's a whole bunch of issues with this service, with the concept, the idea, it being, it's, it's be, it being its own platform. Um, you know, you talk about people want to talk about monopolies in gaming. This would be your monopoly because every, there would be no game anywhere else. The games would exclusively exist on this platform. Um, yeah. But until we see something, I'm not, I mean, well, I don't so really I saw have a tweet an, from somebody. I just don't think I it's interesting. From somebody on the floor that said that they were seeing that Doom game streamed, and they said it it was laggy. I just like they they they, they were streaming that from the floor. But I mean, who knows what kind of internet connection? And who who? I mean, there could be other reasons, but they were saying it was laggy. Okay, Brian. So. Oh God, I don't, we're already running so late. We've got so much news to get into, but hey, we're on the second point of, uh, of I, two pages. I know, I know. I just, how much is this going to cost? Thirty five dollars yeah. a month? You going to spend thirty five dollars a month on this service? Honestly, God, I wouldn't pay a penny for it. Um, I just, I don't, I, I have a gaming computer, and I know, I understand it's a different platform and whatever. But these services already exist, and people aren't going I mean, to them in droves. For me, it would be, it would be like. There's a point where Netflix was justifiable when early on it wasn't. Uh, they would have to get to that point. And I don't know that Google is the ones to do that. They've never been good at that before. It's going to be someone else coming in with a similar technology that actually says, hey, look at all these great games we have. We have a huge collection of games. This is much better than what you're doing before. But does the market... And here's the, here's the thing that, that, that everybody's been talking about. PH has been talking about this since early this afternoon. You've got to convince... The, you can't... You have to convince developers to build games for your non-existent player base. So you're going to have yeah. developers spend hundreds of thousands of dollars internally on paying their staff to work to build their game for this cloud service that as of right now no is guarantees. coming soon TM. That's what we have. 2019. Well, and Google drops services all fairly the time. often. And so this is a danger of them getting on this. And then Google Plus is getting shut down. What I think it. The end of this it's month? not just Google Plus, Feed Burner, Google Reader. Hang, I mean, Hangouts. I, I, I mean, it goes there, on and there, on and on. There's there's a big list. They but they try things out. Don't get the people, or you know, don't get a ton of people on it, or people fade off, and then they just close it down. And they have too big of a track record for a company, I think, to really risk everything on them. I um, so. I, I saw a lot of people on the internet saying this 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 is going to be. You know, this is this is the change for the gaming industry. I I'm not sold. I'm not sold on the performance. I understand enough about how the internet and how technology works. I'm not sold on the performance. I'm not sold on what the price of this thing is going to be, and I'm not sold on the buzzwords. And I'm frankly well, they'd really have to make a game that was so cutting edge that was taking advantage of so many things that would be impossible for a game any other games to do. That's the kind of game that they should be showing off not something that you can run on your ps4 are there but say look at how how these are communicating look at how this is opened up to where it's truly doing like what maverick promises you see footsteps from somebody that walked by a day ago you know what i'm saying like that to that level of detail to where you're seeing things that is impossible to do on any other machine are there some cool things yes are there some act are there some really cool things brian Yes, there are some actual really cool things that they're doing in this. But yeah. is this cuz this this I don't see this coexisting with Steam or Epic Games. This has to be the platform that everybody uses. Is the question is this going this isn't another launcher. This is a whole independent platform. The only reason that Epic's games. platform is is working with them is purely for the engine side of it, not their Epic's. But my point Epic is it's PC game gaming. Selling. Yeah. The games exist locally. This is its own thing. This is not games running. This is not games running on your computer. This is it's a whole nother thing, and I don't see that. I I just I don't see it overtaking Steam, Epic, well, I Origin. Guess if you, if you only have a Chromebook, it'd be. And you know what? If that's their user option. base, fine. But I don't see. I mean, 
I don't want to play. I don't want to stream a game over the internet. I mean, Christ, I'm dealing. I'm dealing with an in- internet issue now with Spectrum, where I'm getting packet loss on my line. It's not my modem. It's not my connection. It's not my router. It's an issue somewhere in Spectrum's network between me, between where I have internet and where I need to get internet to. I've got an issue with that. Well, this works in an ideal world. I, well, I mean, it do- does. It, but the world's not ideal. So, I mean, will this work on your average person's uh, internet connection? Yes. And whatever, whatever's happening, that's going to be the, the issue. I think for a single player game like Assassin's Creed or like Fallout um, or Skyrim, all of these single player games, I think, I think it's act- the Project Stream. Saul and I did the demo of Project Stream in de- December, November. It was freaking awesome. It was super cool. That was for a single player yeah. game. But PUBG. Fortnite, all these other games? No, no, no. I don't think so. I don't. I don't. When people it. are worrying about refresh rates and hertz and latency, all these other things, I mean, they're not going to. No, yeah. there's no way. There's no way. Now, if everybody, I, you're is never going to see a competitive streamer on this. Well, not again. Player. Now, if everybody is playing with that same latency, you could make the argument that it's a level playing field. But I'm just not sold on that. Again, I could be wrong. My opinion is likely to change when there's more information. I'm beyond pissed off that Google didn't have more information. They didn't show anything actually running on the platform except for the apparently the Doom demo, which ran like garbage, as you said. Um, well, they they showed that Assassin's Creed kind of transitioning that one scene, but you, I mean, so they they told there's two games that I know of really that are using it at the moment that they at least have it on. But there. the demos didn't Assassin's look smooth Creed. during the during their video. I mean, you could see Doom stuttering. Now was that. Was it stuttering locally? Was it stuttering into the video encoder that they were streaming with? You know, where was the issue? I'm not sure. But I just, I, I'm i not sold. Internet is not reliable enough, at least in the United States, and it's not quick enough in the United States, I think, for something like this to be realistic. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else you saw in there in that video? I'm, no, I'd recommend... the main points. The whole, the whole thing is about an hour and a half, uh, hour 15. Um... I would recommend you go watch it. It's it technically from a nerd side, Brian, it's very fascinating. There's lots of very cool things. Yeah. I just don't think this is a reliable, realistic platform for the future. I don't know. Yeah. I could be wrong. This is coming from hopefully, the guy that likes more competition you are in the wrong, market. It, it'd be great to see something like this happen, but I don't think so. I think it would be terrible for the, the game. I think it would be terrible for the gaming industry, personally. I, I, th- I think it would open the door to some really cool things, but I don't like it being tied to Google. Yeah, personally. exactly. I don't Everything. like it being in their ecosystem. It's The developer has to build it on Google. It has to be hosted on Google. It needs to be streamed on If they would have released a, 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 an infrastructure for it rather than a service itself, I'd be more on board with it. Here's things that you can use. Here's tools. Like Here's the tools and things to do it. But no, they're they're actually selling the service, which I just don't have a lot of. Faith. Well, that's what Google does. SAS is the way to go. SAS is SAS is where it's at. Software as service. You yep. that's that's where you make a boatload of money. So we'll see. Yep. We'll know more in the summer, apparently. All right. So do we want to uh, announce our first game giveaway? We do, what and do then we, let's talk about some survival okay. games. Yeah. All right. So let me make sure I'm on the right place. So. They changed the interface here, so I just want to make sure that I'm actually doing the right one. So this will be a 60-point raffle here. Uh, And so if you have an hour's worth of listening time, you can enter for this. So it'll be exclamation point giveaway and then 60 points. And I'm going to give you giving away a copy of Absolver. I don't know if you've ever heard this game, Uh, but it is a fighting uh, action martial arts multiplayer PvP game. So... There's a link to the Steam page if you want to check that out, but it's called Absolver, and we'll be giving away here in about 30 minutes. Absolutely. That's a reason to tune in here live to the program. We're live every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, I think is what we're in now. Uh, Eastern Time uh, here. Uh, on, Eastern uh, Freedom Time. Is that yeah, yeah, Eastern Freedom. I like that. Uh, here on uh, Twitch and on YouTube Live um, doing, uh, doing this. Brian. Yes. It's 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 happening. A game is shutting down, um, and I want to get your opinion on this. Uh, it, this kind of came out of nowhere. We've talked about it a little bit, but the Culling uh, released a blog post, a, a, what they call a dev diary, and the title of this is "So Long Farewell." 
It says the calling has had a wild ride since the game's org original launch in March of 2014. More than 3 million of you have tested your resolve on the island with nearly with nearly half that number joining the fray since the calling origins, which was their BR thing that they launched. I don't remember um, you know, like a year or so ago um, uh, became free to play on the Xbox. Uh, they say last November, the game servers have run uh, continuously with stray outages, yada, yada for three years. But the time has come for us to announce that we will be taking the culling offline on May 15th, 2019 while the callings offline modes will remain available after that date online play and associated features will not to that end the game store page and in-app purchases will be disabled as soon as possible it should have been immediately um and then they go on and on and on to talk about this this isn't a surprise um oh in the last three months the most amount of people playing this game has been 112 concurrent so that's not surprising. Um, and I know we were already running late today, but I think this begs the question, Brian, I put it here in the notes, um, is what are online games going to be five years from now? And what do we need? What about open source servering of games? Because here yeah. is an online game that you paid for. And there's they I get it. It costs money. There's monthly obligations to keeping servers update up updated and managed and maintained. I get it. So what is gaming gonna look like in five years from now? With half the games in your Steam library are no longer supported because the main company shut the servers down. Yeah. I one thing that they the game companies don't do, uh I mean, we've seen just survive, for example. Why didn't they release server codes so people could host their own servers? Well, yeah, Ark they, does they it. Wanted to keep all that stuff secret. Uh, if you at least open these things up for the calling, I mean, they put all this work into it. I'm sure you could, a private company could get a community of people playing it. I mean, as far as a, a group of people, they could probably get private servers going much more popularly than what the calling was but, doing. But even if not, Brian, we have, we purchased a server due to the help of our community. It would cost us zero dollars to run to a calling it. server if we wanted to. If you've already got the the infrastructure. Now, the thing that I think that they probably are most concerned about. So one reason that they wouldn't be open source as far as the software is there may be licensing. Things. Of course. It doesn't allow them to truly open source it. You could offer it for free. Uh, but the problem is what they're probably concerned about is then they'd have to maintain it. Let's say there's a major security flaw or a bug or something causing big problems. They then are responsible for patching that issue. I think they want to just walk away from it totally and not be responsible for a single thing. That seems to be, and I can understand where they're coming from. I don't know how many other products they have going. Uh, maybe for a bigger company, it'd be worth having one guy being the, the, the lead where if something ever comes up with this one weird little side product that we have sitting out there, you know, they fix it. Um, they can't open source, but they could release a server client that, that would be free. Uh, to allow people to at least host this game on their own. And I don't, I don't know why more games don't do this. Probably just because they feel like, oh, we don't want to have anything to, we want to walk away. I mean, it's already a disappointing, disappointing enough when the game failed and it's not doing what you were hoping it was going to do. I think they just get kind of upset and are like, all right, we're done with this. Let's move on to something else. I, um, I just... When I saw this note, this was yesterday or something like that, or two a couple days ago when I saw this, I was like, "Boy, this re yeah. uh, this really makes me wonder, Brian, what my Steam library is going to look like when I'm twenty seven. It's going to be up for so long. I mean, right now we're we've just we've gone through what a year and a half of just a lot of multiplayer games. I mean, just most of them are all multiplayer." We've seen however many small uh, small teams and small products uh, projects kind of close down and, and go away. Islands of Nine is a good example. Uh, that's going to happen to the bigger titles too at some point. Not Maybe not the AAA titles. They'll keep up servers for quite some time. But anything that's, I mean, H1Z1, how long, let's say that this doesn't take off. The numbers don't grow. How long are they going to keep up Z1 Battle Royale servers. If it's not profitable, 
they'll close it down just like they did just survive. And this is going to happen with all these different titles because people, these developers don't want to be tied to it. Yet, if you put it out there, you're responsible for it. I know. And it's a catch 22 for the developers. I understand. I understand capitalism. I understand how it works. I understand you can't just offer the service. If nobody's playing it, you're not making money. I understand. I don't have the solution to the problem, but I'm asking yeah. what is the solution? Because this is going to be- They need to hand their products off. I mean, look at what Daybreak was I mean, trying to be to old products. Well, they, they, well, they, took yeah. in, they took in Lord of the Rings. They took on all these things that were made by other companies, but they didn't want to maintain them over the long term. Maybe we should have given more credit to them for doing that. Because I mean, I, that is one thing that I do respect them for, and they should stick to that, right? That should be their thing. And that seemed, I think that's what they've done. That's what they've been doing in this last year is they're handing off all their things that are not doing a maintenance type of, of, of role. They, they're got it to where they're just maintaining communities of players and, and kind of doing what they've been doing with some of these other titles for so long, EverQuest and all that. I think that this opens up the door for maybe another company like them that deals with maybe the engines that these guys are dealing with uh, to where they could come in and, and just, okay, are you done with your product? Like, bring it here. We'll keep the servers running. If there's ma any major bugs, we'll get those patched. But we're just going to make this game continue. Here's a, uh, it, this We'll only spin up however many servers is what's necessary and not waste a bunch of money. This is actually in their post. If there's a team out there that who is interested in taking the reins from us and exploring the game's potential, please contact us. We think with the proper resources and know-how in a free-to-play world, the right group could make great things happen. So they're not, they're not unwilling to, to do this. But it just really, it just really makes me wonder what, what this whole, what, but what this half of my Steam library is going to look like in five years. Do you think that we're going to see a game like a company come in like that? I mean, that this would be the perfect business opportunity of, all right, as long as we get a cut of whatever, you know, money's coming, we'll take it over. You'll get actually the people that originally made it, you'll get a little, you'll get a cut. We're going to maintain it and keep it going, but you'll get a cut of whatever sales we do. Just hand it over to us. If the if it makes money over time, you'll get some money. This seems but like a good business opportunity it. for a company to come out here and become the, I'm going to say the- The, the, the graveyard of games. The island of misfits. But I mean, these, yeah. service, the, these services need maintaining and upgrading. And, and I mean, you can still, there are, uh, people have reverse engineered. I've talked about this before. Uh, Sega Dreamcast servers you can play and i have played eight ball pool on my sega dreamcast using a raspberry pi and a dial-up usb modem and people have yep. backwards reverse engineered the servers for that and you can connect and play eight ball pool like it was 2001 or whenever people were playing yep. that on the sega dreamcast that's cool that's because the, the code was available for them to to use now they had to hunt around a little bit for it and and make some changes to make it work but they made it work. That's an extreme example. That console is like 20 years old at this point. But the PC market, you'd think it would be very easy to do this. Well, imagine if you had a company that was able to, to, to get together 20 titles, right? 20 titles. And then kind of what uh, Daybreak does is they then have a script subscription service. So they create to where you get better XP or you get some sort of a bonus in-game for uh for having that and then you're paying a subscription fee pretty much this company that gives you the premium version or you can go and play the games for free right and get the less maybe not as many skins or whatever uh it seems like there'd be a way that they could get some money out of people enough to at least pay for the servers plus give a little bit back to the developers they originally made it just seems like it would be it would work for somebody for some games for certain types of games yeah, I, I agree. Know. I agree. I I just don't know. You know, that's that's a big risk. Daybreak's doing it. I don't know how much money they're actually making doing it though. Yeah, I don't disagree. So uh that's the culling again in the last no oh, crap, what did I say? In the last three let's go six months. In the last six months, there was a thousand one thousand one hundred and sixty four people. That was September of last of two thousand eighteen, which was almost six months. Isn't ago. that when they released this this re release this one though? Yes. Is it because they had the one that they oh, that came out? In, like, yeah, yeah. So it seemed like it was about that long ago. So maybe yeah. that was like the peak of the. Uh, it, it looks like it was. So 
in a year, there's been a thousand concurrent people. There's 13 people playing it right now. So I understand why they're shutting it down, but I just, I don't know. So yeah. there you go. That's, I just, I thought that was, I thought that was interesting. All right. So here is a game that uh, actually unity put out a post saying that they are integrating blockchain technology into their games. Now, can you think of why they would want to do this? No. Is there anything off the top of your head makes sense of why you would I mean, integrate in partnership for blockchain technology? And it's so that you don't have to host servers internally. No. So what, what they're looking at doing is actually integrating Bitcoin into video games. So I was like, well, what's this mean? Is this Bitcoin mean, or blockchain? Like, they're using blockchain to be able to take advantage of cryptocurrency tokens inside of games. Sorry, not Bitcoin itself, not the, the official registered trademark Bitcoin. You're talking about cryptocurrency. Uh, cryptocurrency. Okay. So, um, but now this, this is speculation a little bit. I got to preface this because they filed a patent recently when they did this, a patent from Unity for in-game in cryptocurrency tokens. And that's the exact same time they did this partnership. So that's what I'm saying is it, it seems kind of suspicious. It seems like what they're really trying to do is find a way to bypass dollars and money and have a currency that will work across borders, any country, so they can actually deal with the currency in game. So that's, I, they haven't said a hundred percent. I mean, there are a lot of other benefits that you can do with blockchain. I don't know that they necessarily make sense in a game engine but the but really what it kind of points out for me is probably has something to do with some sort of a currency in game so interesting um yeah that 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 is um that is that is quite neat um i uh um, I mean, as long as they're not trying to generate cryptocurrency in my game that's no i don't that's think my, i don't i don't think i don't think that's what they're going I, to I, do. I got it as this is a way for them to have a universal currency well, so as far as you want to purchase something in game, you want to do what it doesn't, they don't have to deal with different uh, money, exchanging different money types and all that stuff. Like this puts it all in the game. Credit card processing fees, which are like 3%. You know, um, yeah, you don't have to deal with any of that. It, a game could have its own currency that actually has real world, world value. Yeah, that is a possibility. And that's, that's, the, <laughs> that's, that's the approach that they should game. take. Where doing things in game, you can actually make real money, not not build up a thing and then sell it on eBay like a WoW account, but do things in game, get a cryptocurrency for game X, and then put that sell that currency on a block on a on a cryptocurrency exchange into another mm -hmm. cryptocurrency, or just take it out to cash through an exchange, which is something that you can do. Yep. That would be that would be kind of cool. I don't know. Yeah. So this is this is in their SDK. So. Uh, I do not know where this is going to go, uh, but it, I figured I would mention it because this is something we haven't seen yet. I haven't seen any other game that's even do anything close to this. And uh, it, it'll be interesting to see. They, I'm sure they could use blockchain in some other ways, maybe for authentic, who knows? They could, do, they could use blockchain in some other ways, but the fact that they filed that patent at the same time is this it, it kind of makes me think that it will go towards the cryptocurrency side at least that's their initial initial use of it so that's with unity cool um so that will be tied directly to unity for it all right um let's talk about apex brian um after uh after many many soons we finally have got a uh, a, a, a battle pass uh they're calling it battle pass yeah. season one now it's supposed to be out today. It wasn't out earlier. I think it's out now. I'm not sure. Um, but it is out and you, um, you can go ahead and get it. It's called the wild frontier battle pass. And this is, uh, this is kind of par for the course, I guess, uh, with these yeah. games. So when you get this one, um, it will cost you 950 Apex coins. Um, you can earn over 100 unique items throughout the season. 
um, and everything that you get before the end of the season is yours. Um, you get updated dashboard images for season one, updated main menu screen with season one are updated lobby visualizations for season one. And then they did some updates to the, um, FAQ. Um, now everybody that plays during season one, whether you purchase the reward system, the battle pass or not, will get one wild frontier legend skin, five apex packs and 18 wild frontier themed stat trackers so you'll get those um in the game and then um that's it i mean that's that so they finally got their first um they finally got their first battle pass out here and it's good for them to do i mean they need to do it now because no, i would make the argument right they now, needed to do it a couple weeks ago but well they should know but but this thing is they can't delay too much longer because you got to do it while the game is super popular so people sign up and actually get into it it's dropping hot um, not, yeah. not, not a hot drop podcast like our friends, Dano, but the, it has, nobody's watching it on Twitch and it's because the big boys have all moved on. They're all playing GTA RP right now, which when I looked earlier had 300,000 people watching, um, which is insane. Most, more than yep. like oh, m many cable channels combined in the United States. <laughs> um, but the streamers are starting to move away from it, Brian. I, for instance, haven't played it in a while. I haven't had any urge to play. I now take that for what it's worth, but I haven't seen as many of our community members playing it as they were a couple um, couple weeks ago. And I think this is BR burnout at its finest. It's fun for a while. Yep. Apex was was and is a fantastic very game. Very well made. Very well made. Very a very very little issues to be dealing with, and. All together, well-rounded thing, but it's another BR game. I've been playing. I got you, you after you play it long enough. You realize, okay, this is still BR. You called me out, and uh, I'm back on the League of Legends. So that's what I've been spending my time doing. Um, but I think if I wasn't playing that, I don't think I'd be. I wouldn't be playing Apex. I can tell you that. I just wouldn't be playing anything. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah. There's Apex. Um, now. Yeah, so there was one other thing. Let's see. With Apex, they did release their their, their Wild Frontier. It's, there was a patch that came out, and that was the one, you know, was it yesterday you said? Uh, I think it was earlier today. I could be wrong, though. Okay, yeah. So, Maybe it so they, it, yeah. they do they do you know, those free rewards. Um, they have the new legend. So there's a, a number of things in there that they've improved, balanced a lot of things. Uh, they capped the PC uh, FPS to 300. Hmm. so some people may be disappointed at that but uh yeah so they've, they've gone through and there's a lot of fixes in this patch uh, i don't know that that's why people are not playing it as you said i think there's more reasons to to it than that but and let me say it's not that people aren't playing the game it's just not it's not the not the numbers and the hype that it was in there a week okay, or two com ago. compared to a couple weeks ago the numbers dropped significantly and a lot of it is because i think streamers have moved on to play other games now they're not it's not when they're not paying a million dollars for an afternoon <laughs> yeah to play the game um so so we'll see uh i'm sure it'll come back and now that the battle passes in people will buy that and get all into that so uh so yeah that is uh that is apex um what other survival news do we have here what do you i mean we've got a we've got a whole bunch of games to talk about we've got about oh 20 minutes or so to get through it all so what uh well, Command and Conquer, well, what's, I mean, what's the most important survival thing on here? Okay, so let's talk about a game. Now, I have a lot of patch notes for a game called Outlaws of the Old West. Okay. And this is a kind of open-world survival Western game. And hmm. it it is actually made by a company by uh, not, not the company that makes ARC, but you know how there's that, like, basement whatever monkey it's 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 some weird company that was on the la launch screen okay. for uh for arc the actually virtual basement it's got like a picture of a monkey or whatever uh for the law the logo they are the developers of this and so it's not made by a really small development team this is actually uh, a big development team okay and so yeah there thanks what? Yeah, that's uh, that reminds me of the game uh donnie's been playing this quite a bit he actually gifted me a copy so i got in there and got to play a little bit oh, thanks Donnie. Done, appreciate but, it yeah <laughs> a number of biomes um 
it's it's got hunting and it you got build bases. It's pretty much a very it's very much a survival game. Okay. The standard survival game. It's in its very early stages, so it'll be interesting to see where they go from here. As far as it does look, it doesn't look super polished. And that's one thing that kind of I'm like, ah. We showed this like last week. A long time ago. No, we, we showed, showed this a couple weeks well, ago. But we there was something kind of hinting at it a while ago. Yeah, we but they hadn't released it yet at that point. Okay. So this is out. So if you're interested in checking it out, but it's Outlaws of the Old West. They did release this past week. We yeah, okay. We did show this like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we showed a trailer, I think. Yeah. But now Which, it's actually out and you actually can play it yeah. now. Thanks, so. Donnie. I appreciate it. Um, it is on sale. I'll have to go buy myself. $20. Uh, to, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll take, I'll take some money out of the infection uh, <laughs> the infection account. <laughs> steal, from our pack, steal from our PAX trip and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and buy. So we can play some Yeah, so I can play it for uh, 0.04 hours and then go back to <laughs> playing <laughs> like League of Legends. Man. Yeah. So um, interesting. It's out on Steam. It is uh, It's very early bucks. stages. So mixed reviews, 60% being that it's put out by virtual basement. Uh, that gives me some hope. I mean, because they are tied to, I mean, arc has, has a good track record. Um, 60% of the almost a thousand reviews, uh, are positive. And this has been out since last week, the since the 12th. So yep. last Tuesday, interesting. Yep. So that's one. And so, but look at, I just put a link to the notes. I didn't want to go over them. But look at in the past week, they've gone from 1.0, which was the release day, mm -hmm. and now they've released through 1.05. So they've had six, what, six different patches that they've done in the past week. So they've been working on it. Good on them. That's yeah. not one where they just released it and said, here you go. You know, oh, there's bugs. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Good. I like to see that. We see a lot of them. Uh, I, I don't know if you, could you cover the arc one? I mean, my throat's a little bit sore. There's yeah. So arc did an update arc. here. We've got an arc update. This is update, um, <laughs> 293.105. And, um, the, this was released on March 16th. So a couple days ago and they fixed an exploit. Um, that is the, uh, that is the update. That is the, you know, hold on. Let me get my lower third up here on the screen. Uh, arc. Yeah. So they fixed an, uh, fixed an exploit, um, on the 16th. And that was it. So if you have, we're dealing with that exploit issue, it has been fixed. And uh, we thank the folks over at Wildcard for fixing that exploit. All right. That covers, <laughs> that covers. I put arc. it on there. I was like, I could skip this one, but there's the arc news. <laughs> that's, so that's, that's, too, that's too good not to cover. Um, that's just yeah. like, that's like we fix a problem and it's like, oh man, we got to put a commit note on here. Ah, fix the problem. Send. I don't care. Yeah. We, we didn't hear from him what he actually did. That's just what he told us. That is like, in the, in the that's topic. like naming your thing like, show logo new underscore new 2019 because you've already got your show logo new and your show logo new so you got to add you know 2019 yep. or some append to it that's essentially what they did all right so that's arc um what's going on with atlas have we ha we're, we're in mid-march have we gotten our big patch yet or are we still awaiting the um still so they're they're saying ETA late March. So I would assume in the, assume in the next week or two is going to be the big patch. Uh, but they have, I mean, they've been putting out some performance. It seems like they've been trying to fix some things because the last one that we covered is twenty one dot thirty one. Okay. Um, and the current is is actually twenty three. So they put out a patch since I made the patch notes. Another patch. Did they? But yeah. So um, but mainly they've been trying to do optimizations because they've had a lot of issues with, I mean, they've got a lot of stuff going on. Of course. Bandwidth optimizations. One thing they did recommend in this last patch is to make sure that you set the the bandwidth to epic uh, because they, it, they it, for some reason, they're having disconnects and things like that uh, from the bandwidth issues. So they want you to put it to epic because I guess probably when it's less, it's not able to quite do all the things it needs to do. Uh, but other than that, it's been pretty much fixes, and uh, some of our clients had fixes. Optimization of the NPC crew, uh, just mainly optimizations that they've done, probably in preparation for this upcoming patch. I'm assuming they're trying to get it to where it runs correctly, going to be adding the underwater stuff, and they have a lot of things that they're going to be adding as far as going on. Um, so that, I don't know why that... It was supposed to be released earlier. I don't remember saying end of March. So I thought it was mid March. I, I thought that's what it said too, but I could be wrong. But they're they're waiting. So, of course. Uh, but it should be here in the next week. 
that's a total redesign as far as the world's going to have a bunch more islands. It's going to redesign the whole claim system. They have the war system. So this is going to be a really big patch. But you know Daybreak. They are no, or sorry, not Daybreak. Wildcard. Wildcard is known for delaying releases. So it may not even be the end of March. Brian's a little drunk here, mixing up his, uh, making up his, mixing up his game Daybreak, houses. What's Daybreak in that? What's in that cranberry and, uh, juice, Brian? What are you drinking here? You're actually, messing up. You're messing up four July it's cranberry juice and uh, and, spray. and not a sponsor. Yeah, maybe <laughs> and maybe a little something else. If you're mis- mixing up Daybreak and Wildcard, not <laughs> two That's totally sorry, polar Wildcard, opposites Daybreak. of companies. Uh, yeah, thanks. Now we've lost our sponsor. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. The only <laughs> chance fine. I get to get free games because people don't buy me. games. So now, now that's gone too. Um, all right. So all right, that, uh, here's one. Here's one yeah. that I really want to cover. There's okay. actually a video, and this is a game that I've been kind of teasing a little bit, saying actually m- mostly I talk about it in the Discord. Uh, but this is one. You have a Discord. That, Where can people get some information about that? Sorry, Discord. Huh? Well, well, said, if you want infectionpodcast.com. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Go in. There. Perfect place if you want to go to the upper right hand corner. Join our Discord server, and we have a nice little uh, news channel, and we talk about all kinds of games. And here's where you would have heard. Because we have Saul, who's constantly pushing a game called Factorio, who says that they which will never, never been, put their game on sale. Which I will so never I buy. Refuse to buy that game because it will never go on sale. My man. But guess what? Someone who knows this kind of uh, people like us is putting out a 3D version huh. of Factorio. So here is a video, and I will buy this one because <laughs> it's on sale. Okay. Of music for uh, audio listeners. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Uh, you know, you're always looking out for those audio listeners. Sorry, Musty. Uh, I know. I know. I will, in fact, hear from him about <laughs> about this, and probably our friend UGX Vibe about how it's, uh, it's a hard game to explain. I mean, for people who've never played Factorio or seen Factorio, uh, Factorio is a game where you pretty much set up production lines. Yeah, and you're gathering resources. It, it, it's just you create people create really intricate and crazy systems that are producing this material which allows them to produce this other material um and it gets it gets really really difficult to to do um this one is a full 3d you can still create it's now it's not as big as factorio as far as the number of things because i don't think the computer could handle that but they're still able to make pretty big uh sets of factories with a lot of things happening you can run around fly around they have to where um, you have ships you can fly in, multiplayer, and you have uh, the ability to, I guess, kill different animals and get resources from them. So it it was definitely, it looks cool. It'll be interesting to see if it's as popular as with Factorio, because Factorio has a very niche audience that really loves it. I don't know if this will be a, maybe open up to a little bit wider audience that's willing to play this. 
Well, if the game's so. ever on sale, I'll have a good time buying it. Yep, I think I think it's on sale now. It's on, it's on I, Epi- I it's on up, the Epic Store. Yeah, I think it's on sale right now. I I signed up and I think I'm gonna. I don't know if they're gonna have me on the alpha or whatever. No. Oh. But uh, but you can. I think you can sign up for that if you want to try to test things. But All yeah, right. worth try worth trying out. Yeah, it, absolutely. It's on the Epic Store. We have our link, but it is currently twenty nine ninety five. So it's five cents cheaper than Factorio at the moment. It's my kind of game. So maybe that's not on sale yet. I take that back. Oh, okay. But I'm sure it will be at some point. Gotcha. All right. But it's five cents cheaper than the 2D version of the game. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, Brian. Right. Um, where uh, where to next here? Do we have any other? Uh, uh, we have okay, other well, news, but what? I mean, so we we'll oh. may cover like another game or two. So what do you want to cover? Okay. So how about here's one that we actually talked to. We did. I think we weren't allowed to record video for this one, um, that packs, but we were able to play it some, and it's called Generation Zero. Oh yeah! And uh, there is a video for this. You, I don't know if you want to play that. This, is there, this is there will any, show some gameplay. Is there talking, or can we talk over the video? Or do you want to show the whole video? We could we could talk over because I, I think it's just music and then the sound Perfect. of the game itself. Right, let's there's, do that. I don't then. think there's anybody talking. In it. Peggy twelve. Okay, so uh, yeah, we did see this at um, at PAX. Um, what uh i got i i'm gonna have to so this is okay. so so this is a now if you remember that well you can see on there 1989 so this actually kind of in the past it's like an alternate past uh where they've taken some of the concepts from some of the i guess 80s movies that you really enjoyed and kind of turned it into a game so uh there's these robots and mechs and things that are that are kind of taken over the area uh, and so you're trying to work your way through it. it and now I'm remembering this from just what the, the lady had told us at PAX. We recorded an um, interview with her actually, but for some reason, the audio doesn't exist on got messed up, And we so. weren't, we weren't allowed to capture actual video of gameplay in it when we did it. Yeah. Um, but, but it is, I think for what I remember levels, like you're pretty much going through and doing various levels. It's not a big open world game. Uh, yeah. But it was done, yeah, it was done in kind of a, uh, a an homage to the 80s as far as some of the some of the themes to it. And it's got, yeah, it's some things that throw back to that. But it, it is a unique game. It was fun to play. Uh, and it looks like they've gotten a lot of progress since then. And, and the developers that made this were actually, you know, they were developers for some big companies. And I believe they're a Swede. It's a THQ Nordic and uh, yeah. yeah, they were super yeah. cool uh, at PAX, but unfortunately, yeah, she was really re- nice. they wouldn't let us record anything. And then I'm a stupid idiot and screwed up the uh, recording. So, <laughs> so, so we don't. We don't it would have, have been a, the best re- best interview at PAX. You know, sure. there there was some files with it that maybe I, may, I you know I may go back and try to recover some of the audio with it. There there's a couple of corrupted files I may be able to 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 fix something with there. So I don't know. Maybe I will go back and try to see if I can't dig that up because it was a good interview, but it was it was screwed up. So. I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe uh, I can go and then and find it. There's, so we, uh, I don't know. There's a couple games that we could just show. Uh, actually, there's one with talking that it, that is right after that. Um, so this one's called "Not My Car." Is this a survival and game? It's a BR game. Okay. So, but it's 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 supposed to be different, and it actually explains it in the video. So I'll let you judge whether or not you think it's actually going to be a different BR game. Okay, different BR game. Let's see. Okay, let's be honest for a second. When you're inexplicably trapped on an island where everyone's trying to kill you, your two little twig legs ain't going to cut the mustard. You need a four-wheeled death machine that'll kick you in the truck nuts. Say hello to the beast, an off-road demigod dishing on a sampler platter of vehicular destruction. Looking for a gun rack? This truck is the gun rack, pal. Rockets, shotguns, grenade launchers. You can even slap on a rail gun for those precious little moments when ship gets real. This is about doing something you've never done before. This is about dropping out of a plane at fast and furious velocity. This is about serving up a hot lead hoagie and chasing it down with motor oil. And guess what, sheep? This baby's absolutely free. Play Not My Car, available only on Steam. It's Battle Royale with cars everything else is just a walking simulator i mean i feel like i'm watching a um 
a uh, Ford F-150 commercial. Yeah. There is a game like this that already exists. I know Ross plays it. And I've tried it. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, Ross, please help me with this. Um, but there is a game like this that kind of a, a cross out. Yeah, there's a game like this that is very yeah. similar. It's not a BR. H- H1Z1 tried this. Remember? Oh my God, you're right. Car Royale. Yeah, kind of yeah they tried it. Uh, I don't know what happened to that. Oh, what about but... the other? What about, oh God, what was the game? You build spaceships and they turned it into uh, a BR. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, but robo uh, uh, robocraft did a br robocraft, abysmal yeah. failure right they got rid of it the br yeah they, yes. they closed that down we've seen this this is clearly so this one's free track. i think it released robocraft is free too it's out april 5th april 5th okay so here in a couple weeks it'll be interesting to see if if there's enough room for another and is it really that different is it going to be something that people actually play uh, but they're going off of the, this is not your uh, just another br kind of a gimmick but we've seen Whether a couple it is but we've seen a couple failed car battle royale games. What's going to make this yep. one any different? I mean, if this this was made with the intention, it they'd have to have made it very well. So I don't know uh, who's making this. We'll find out. Skybound Games. What do they do? Uh, Their logo looks familiar. They, yeah, they've made a they've made a number of games. Uh, oh, they've done some of the Walking Dead trailers. Yeah. Um, they actually, well, Skybound actually uh, helps make the Walking Dead show. They published The Long Dark on console. Yeah, so their hmm. Skybound is is a pretty big company. Okay. Um, well, that, that so well, that's it, interesting. Okay, let me preface this though. They also had something to do with Overkill's The Walking Dead. Oh, well, that turned out very well. Yeah. So can't promise that it's going to be something great, um, but you know. They they have made games before, so. Be all right. Uh, out. Dun dun dun. So, okay. Th- actually, I, I want to talk about this really quick. So, <laughs> Discord. There's just too much news. All the survival news we're hitting, Brian. You're bringing up all the survival news on here. Ta- we've talked about every game okay. engine. We've talked about Steam. We've talked about Unity. We talked about it all. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Discord. They actually have a thing called Discord Dev. Um, where they're actually giving developers, because this is somewhat survival, or this is about <laughs> okay, games. Okay. They're giving verified servers to game devs where they're actually able to integrate um, the community and uh, have a commerce side of it as well, to where you can purchase the game directly from their Discord and have other features, have a lot of uh, things to where they can track revenue, and it, it just gives features. So you'll start seeing developers in their Discord server have some extra features. So if there's a game that you follow, um, you'll you'll see this being integrated into that system. That's pretty neat. So I just wanted to mention that, but that's uh, that that's Discord dev. And so you'll that's a new thing they're opening up. It won't be to the average person that you'll see it, but once you start going into those games, uh, you will start to see that. So all right. Um, all right. Uh, you want to just no man's ju- sky i would just name off other games yeah. okay no man's sky they're putting out one called beyond oh, an expansion that's going to be coming out Let here next die. month but the thing is what i found interesting i have a link to this um elite dangerous their expansion that they've done recently is called beyond as well so that was kind of hmm. odd. they're using the exact same name no man's sky and elite dangerous they took the exact same name and elite dangerous did one's a halfway decent game the other one is a, a, a lie uh-huh. Um, you put a, or I, I think you put a link in here. Uh, Call of Duty Mobile, they're going to be releasing. That was PH, but yes. Did see okay, the, the Call of Duty Mobile. So it's actually, it's it's like one of the older Call of Duties running on a mobile game. Um, World War Z, there's a really cool dev diary. Maybe we'll save that for next week where they go in because that's like a five or ten minute, five to seven minute video for that. Okay. Um, there's the whole epic thing, which we can go into next week. Uh, PUBG, uh, they've done a loot rebalance in Arangel. Uh Also, they did 10 arrests in India, I think it was, for people playing because that game is actually banned there. Really? And so they've arrested 10 people for playing the game. Boy, um, it, seems like, sim- it seems like people have no the concept of how the outside world works outside of America. Because yeah. we're always talking about things like this. <laughs> uh, Fallout 76 has released their Wild Appalachia 
actually uh, came out actually on the 13th. Wild Appalachia patch, which has a lot of uh, fixes, um, also some new quest lines, different things they've added to that. Rust has, we have a video for Rust that you guys can go check out. Um, one thing is now if you die in the water, your, uh, your loot bag actually floats to the top. Um, Unturned has an update that you can go check out. Scum has an update and a new comic that you can go. So there's going to be a link to the, uh, the comic number two for that. Hurt World has an update. Um, ROE has three updates. And uh, let's see. That's pretty much it. Got rid of that extra line there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I had an extra line. I got to clean up the show notes over here. <sighs> so I think, is there anything else that we missed? I mean, yeah, we missed almost all the notes. Um, well, oh, I mean, real quick, there, we didn't mention. There, uh, yeah, there was a thing with Epic where they were uh, spying on your Steam friends list and well, collecting that, no, your Okay, so no, that's 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 up here. So I know, but that, I'm saying we didn't we didn't mention that. No, uh, but yeah, well, I said maybe we'll cover that next week. Okay, yeah, okay. So that's a I'd, teaser for next. Okay, week. all right. Um, it's in the notes, but we just didn't get to it today. Yeah, um, yeah, and it is survival related because you know survival um well we really need probably need to look at changing the name of the show <laughs> i mean that that might be a that might be a way to go who knows um infection the uh, the gaming yeah the general podcast. the general the non-discriminant game podcast <laughs> or something oh, well there's like only so many survival games out there nowadays yeah well it's fine some weeks are, some weeks are like this all right sean it's not called the brian podcast I, I, i'm here as well <laughs> The Brian Show with Nick. Yeah, that's that's funny. I like that. All right. Um, well, thank you, Brian. Thanks for uh, thanks for compiling uh, all of the uh, mm -hmm. all of the news here and getting that all up to date. Um, so we'll do current players, tip of the week, and then get out of here. Right? If we've covered everything. Here. Yep. All right. Yep, sounds good. Well, then, if that is the case, let's get started with current players. Let's start with uh, we're gonna go we're gonna H one Z one last. I typically start with them, but we'll do them last. Let's start with Ark, Survival Evolved. Currently playing 25,644. Your 24 hour peak, 39,769. And the 70 peak, 54,588. Moving on over to PUBG. Currently playing 25,556. Your 24 hour peak, 792,476. With a 70 peak of 905,999. Boy, I'll tell you this, Atlas's numbers are hurting. Now they are doing a wipe, so that's probably got something to do with it, but they're still hurting. Currently playing 1,754, the 24-hour peak, 2,544, with a 70 peak of 6,004. Let's take a look at H1Z1. Player numbers are starting to level out a little bit, but still a decent amount of people playing. Currently playing this game, 2,891, the 24-hour peak. 6,650 with a 70 peak just shy of 9,000 players at, uh, excuse me, just shy of 10,000 players at 9,858. And it's not, Brian, it's not a good sign that we're already seeing the uh, the numbers starting to taper off in this game, but, um, yeah. but they are. And I just, I'm going to look here. Um, the high was over the weekend, of course, it was on Sunday. Um, I don't know if this is in UTC or not. Uh, so it was probably it was probably Saturday night, if I had to guess, into Sunday morning was the peak on uh, Z1 Battle Royale. But you know, I, I assume over I assume the 24 hour peak next week, or the excuse me, the week peak next week will probably be a couple thousand short of what it is this week. I'll keep track of that. But if I had to guess, probably three thousand yeah. shorter, two thousand shorter, something like that. <laughs> And that's that's the thing is, will they be able to maintain this new company? I, I mean, what's Nant G's goal in the long run for this? And I assume it's to make money. <laughs> yeah, you would think. Will they be able to? And now they said mobile. Do you think the future of this is they're going to roll out a mobile <laughs> one game yeah. version of the game, and that's going to be pretty much where this because the game the graphics would look good on them on a little phone. Yeah, you know, I just don't know. I mean, I don't think anybody's playing these. They'd, any they'd of these have to use games. a do a whole new engine. Nobody's I mean, playing maybe Arc. Nobody's playing Arc on mobile. I don't it. think people are playing Fortnite on the mobile phone. I don't think people are playing PUBG. I just don't think it's happening. Will Will Forge Light run on mo on mobile? I mean, I've assumed that they're. I have no idea. Doing. I, I I don't know if they could rework that engine enough to make it run. I would on the assume. Phone. I mean, maybe. I'm not. I, I don't really know. 
or the or is this Nat G creating a whole new version of the engine that's made for mobile? Because they they were gonna. I think that's gonna be their push. Releasing EverQuest, releasing all these titles that use that Forge Lite engine on mobile and tablet. Well, then if, if they're going to release all those games, then yes, it would make sense to invest the money to mobile. That would make sense. I think that's their long term goal. I think this is more. It'll of, probably be iOS they, only if I had to guess. Yeah. Well, I won't play that. Sucks to be. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like you'd be all into yeah. it anyway. <laughs> Scumbag. <laughs> hey, it'd be fun to play EverQuest a little bit with if they fixed the Oh, control. yeah. That, you think that UI would be fun to deal with on your They would have to totally redo phone. it because it's impossible to play on a on a, <laughs> on a 30 inch screen. You'd have to be, I mean, you'd have to have a stylist to sit here and, and tap away. I don't feel like that would be a very good experience. Yeah, it would be bad. All right. So, you ready for tip of the week? I guess so. Well, yeah, what is tip of All the week? All right. So, <laughs> tip of the week is we go through in there and give a general gaming tip or one for a specific game. And since we're going to be playing some Conan Exiles uh, this week, this will be my tip of the week. All right, so in Conan Exiles, one thing that I really want to recommend is that you don't get attached to your first base. We always seem to run into this issue when we uh, when we set up a base and then we put so much time and resources into that starting base area. The first base that you're able to craft uh, should be just for getting initial items and getting your footing on the map. Uh, and then as you level up, you need to start creating, you'll be able to create bigger and better uh, cr crafting parts for those buildings. There'll be maybe some building types and things like that you weren't able to craft before uh, that once you get a high enough level you might build your base a little bit differently uh, but also you may be able to build a base that is able to handle different environments because they do use temperature there's cold environments uh, biomes there's desert biomes that are much hotter uh, and so you may need to be able to craft a certain level item before being able to even survive into that environment it may be going to that environment you have access to much better resources uh, there may be things that you can get in the snow environment or into, in one of these in the mountain environment that has resources that are actually important to you so it would be a long trek for you to be able to run across the whole map to get those so it's best if you place your base either in that area or a place that's in a reasonable distance and the starting area is not that uh, you might also need to build uh, perhaps armor or gear that's resistance to cold and things like that that will require a higher level crafting bench and maybe materials that are not available in the starting area so be prepared to work your say where your way through the map and uh, don't get attached to that first starting area move to the start once you've leveled up leave that base behind you can leave it there as a place to possibly spawn in the future but uh, start working your way to the more difficult because so the map they have expanded quite a bit and it is much bigger so it's worth checking out and actually exploring. So that is my tip of the week. All righty. Thank you very much, Brian. Do appreciate it. Yes. All right. So are we ready for the game giveaway now? We are. All right. So let's go ahead and close this. And we will draw. Congratulations, Big Woody Sauce. Who so just started Woody streaming Sauce. on Twitch as I'm sitting here. My phone goes off that he's streaming on Twitch. So I know for a fact he's not watching this right now. All right, to well, steal he our know. audience. <laughs> I forgive him. Yes. All right. Well, should we give it to, they have to be present. So <laughs> no, if, they, if he that. doesn't respond. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll give that, to, we'll give that to our good friend Ross, who, by the way, streams on Twitch almost every night. So you should check him out. Yeah. So if you're looking for somebody, he does stream and he's entertaining. I, <laughs> I do warn you, he may not be wearing a shirt, but. Hey, that's not my business. <laughs> You can do whatever he wants. Yeah. As long okay. as Twitch allows it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's another story. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, Brian. Well, thank you. Um, yes. A lot, of, a lot of good conversation. I know, you know, some weeks, it's funny, some weeks we don't have any survival news and we struggle to do a two-hour show. And then we've got shows like this where there's a big thing like Google Stream, which infects the whole, in infects the whole industry. That we, <laughs> so, we, so we need to talk about it. Um, so we'll see, you know, as, as you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to the survival stuff next week and we'll have more, more regular as as somebody games. releases news on survival. So yeah, exactly. Set. Once we get some decent games. So, uh, there you go. Uh, all right. Well, 
our game of the week Ready is to yep, Conan Exiles. Conan Exiles. 8 o'clock, Friday night. Yep. I will try to be there. I don't know if it'll run on my laptop, but I'll try. And we are running a private server, so make sure you're in our Discord so that you can uh, get the connection info for that. And we have a password on there, so we will have the password in our Discord channel. Yep, check the uh, server's text channel in there, all the info. Yep. All right, if you want to, if you want to find me, uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Boise Computer, or my blog, biteoftech.com. And of course, our website is the best place to go if you want to find a link to our Discord server to get the invite. Uh, on the upper right-hand side, there is a green button, Join Discord Server. Um, also, we have on there our Steam group, which gives notifications before the live show starts. Uh, we have a link to our Twitch channel, um, our YouTube channel, and all of the audio forms we have. And also, we, we had a lot of news that we didn't cover this week, um, patch notes and things like that. So if you would like to go and maybe see, maybe there was something that you could hear it, you know, it's music during the the video, but you want to see what was actually there. If you go to our website, Nick will have posted by tonight uh, a, a video, audio form, and all the show notes that we referred to throughout this show. And so we do that each and every week. So for any past episode that you've ever listened to, you can jump onto our website, pull up that episode, and view the show notes for it. So it's all there. And if you know if you're listening to this the, to the show in your car and you heard the videos, you can send your complaints to Brian at infectionpodcast.com. That's Brian at infectionpodcast.com. Yeah. Send all your hate. Maybe they there. enjoyed a little bit of music on their drive. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. Maybe I, I don't know. Hey, send your complaints. Don't send them to me. It's not my decision. So, uh, <laughs> Brian. And by you. the way, that was the satisfactory video. So if you were looking for. <laughs> If you want to go find out which video you have to watch, actually know what happened at that point. Yeah, and the two Google videos, which had no words, <laughs> had no text, yeah. no words either. So, oh, the one did. One of them did. Yeah, one of them but said it didn't describe very anything. Very generic terms that had nothing to do with yes. anything. Gaming. Video. Gaming. You S like gaming. Stadiums. Watching things. People have been building stadiums for a long time. I mean, I swear, I was watching that video. I was like, what in... The I was watching that stream. I was like, what in the hell? Are th what is this? Like, can... Can we, why does everything have to be so dramatic? Why doesn't it be like, hey, we're Google, we're making a video game streaming platform. Since we're unprepared, we don't know the price and or anything. Come back in eight months. And this is a GDP, video. so they're they're <laughs> pitching this to a bunch of developers who probably could care less about that video. And a bunch they're of like, gaming okay. nerds. Yeah, developers and gaming yeah. nerds who follow GDC. It's not normal people don't know what the hell GDC is. So Yeah, but some some grandma's gonna see that and say, Oh, stadiums? Okay. I mean, uh, you can have so. no idea what the, what any of that even means, what the game is about, but it's about stadiums <laughs> yeah. and the history of a thousand years of us competing or something. I don't know. <laughs> All righty. Thank you, Brian. We'll, uh, mm -hmm. we'll see you Friday night for Conan and uh, next yep. Tuesday for another episode. Yep. All righty, uh, folks. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig. Of course, visit our website if you missed any portion of the show. And uh, definitely check out our show notes. It's infectionpodcast.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great week, and uh, see you next week. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>